Hi, this is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to Krypton Report. Up in the sky, look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's the Krypton Report! host Tyler and welcome to Krypton Report, a podcast dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl. We're going to look at the Supergirl TV series as well as the Krypton TV series, anything that has to do with the characters in their world. Comics, movies, TV shows, we will talk about everything and anything. We are part of the Southgate Media Group podcasting network. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review to help us get better. You can find me personal at JTY Patrick on Twitter and everything else. You can buy a Krypton Report t shirt at tpublic.com. Check it out. They have all sizes, colors, styles of shirts. Just go to tpublic.com and search Krypton Report and you'll see our logo. And every time you buy a shirt, it helps support other podcasts from southgatemedia.com. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Krypton Report. It is I, your host, Tyler, with my partner in crime, the other half of the Superman equation, Mr. James Cole. Hello, James. Hey, how's it going? Par- Partner in crime, though, and isn't it like partner in justice? Oh. Not in justice, but in justice. I like that better. <laughs> Let me make that more of a routine saying. Um, today's kind of one of our bonus episodes. It's kind of something that James and I want to do for a while. We just haven't got around to do it. We are both Zack Snyder fans, and we just kind of wanted to have a better open discussion. It's been... Uh, let's see, this is 2018, so it's been over two years since uh, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice was released, and we've talked about it on this podcast, uh, but now, after we did our Man of Steel slash late Father's Day episode, we decided, you know what, we were going to do Justice League when it came out, but we decided, why not just take our time and do them all, and basically do Man of Steel, BBS, Justice League, kind of in order, and kind of watch the progression of the Superman character as the through line. And that's what we're doing. So before we get started, um, James, how many times did you see Man of Steel, or I mean BBS in theaters? Uh, BBS, uh, I was able to catch it twice. Um, the uh, uh, theatrical version... And then um, the Ultimate Edition. Um, I, will say I, I wanted to see it many more times, uh, but, you know, unfortunately, finances play a factor in that. So I ended up but since I bought the movie, movie I, in theaters five times. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you how it plays out, because you're, everyone's probably thinking, dear Lord, here's what happened. Back when they announced the teaser trailer. And they said, you could see the teaser trailer in theaters. I signed up because I knew there'd be like perks, right? So Janine and I went to the movie theater. We watched the teaser trailer for it. It had a little bit of a little intro by Snyder, a little extra quick scene. And then as we were leaving, you signed your email and your name. And they gave us posters of like the wanted looking posters of Batman and Superman. Oh, cool. Yeah, I have those. Then fast forward a year, we get an email with two tickets to a release on the Monday when the movie hits on Friday. So we got to go see it on Monday for free with kind of like the press screening here in our area. And then we'd already purchased our tickets for that Thursday night. So then Thursday night comes, we go again. Then Friday afternoon, my brother is off work and wants to go. So my mom watches Solomon and I go with my brother. So by the time this week is over, I've seen it three times. I'm jealous. So the next thing happens is like a couple weeks go by. And during that time I had purchased, um, I don't remember exactly what it was. Cause I was buying just every time there's a big DC movie, they'll mark down the prices of previous DC like films and stuff. And it might've been Batman 66 volume three or 
one of the other animated movies. It had a five dollar off like ticket for BVS. So one day I just I had some free time. It was raining, and I just kind of took a half day at work. Came home. I was driving home. You know, it was only like five fifty for a ticket for an early showing. So I, I spent fifty cents, and I saw it again. Then fast forward it to July, about a week before the digital release on home video, we got another email to a, to a one shot screening of the Ultimate Edition in Columbus. And my wife and I went then. So that's how oh. I ended up seeing it five times. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, I mean, the movie, the movie deserves uh, to be watched on the big screen every time. Um, so in I, my opinion. They paid for it twice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they gave, they gave it away. I mean, what can you do? You know what I mean? I'm sure if you could have paid for it those times, you would have as well. I mean, we, we need to mention that this movie came out in 2016. Yes. Okay. Man of Steel is 2013. Originally it was supposed to be 2015, but this movie from the moment it was announced, I feel like every detail was in the, was discussed, was shown, was talked about. Um, I felt like by the time we got this movie, we knew so much about it. We'd seen so many images, so many trailers. I mean, to put this in perspective, that teaser trailer was a year out. And here we are in July of 2018. We're getting our first trailer of Aquaman, and it comes out in five months. So the marketing for this movie was way too long. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and, because, and because of... Because of its marketing, it kind of even made Justice League suffer because of the fact that they casted uh, characters for the Justice League during the film, uh, during the production of Batman versus Superman. I mean, um, it was the first, it was the day after the Flash premiered in 2014 that they announced the other actors that would be uh, Cyborg, Flash, and I think maybe that's when they, no. Momo was already announced, I think, before that as Aquaman. But I just remember, like, hearing, like, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman and all, like, I mean, it was just, like, everything possible was out. To put this in perspective for some people, this movie was announced. I was in North Carolina. By the time this movie came out, I had moved back to Columbus, had given... Had we had birthed our first child, and he was a year old by the time this movie came out. Right. Um, the mindset I had when this was announced to the mindset and where I was in my life when this was released was uh, one of the biggest changes in my life. <laughs> yeah, it's um, – well, I mean since they showed so much of, of this movie um, – in the marketing, uh, you know, they, that give, that gave everybody the opportunity to start scrutinizing every possible detail of a DC film. And that continues to this day, you know, every little thing that comes out, every piece of news, no matter how small, you know, there are people on both sides of the fence. You know, there are people excited about the news. They just want to, you know, they, they just like hearing new news. And then there's other people who just like try and use every ounce of some, you know, every ounce of news to tear, to tear it back on a DC film. And unfortunately it all started with BBS sadly because of its, because of its three year marketing. Yes. All right. Well, we're going to kick off now or get this started. So James and I, if you want to uh, watch along with us, my daughter is trying to sleep. She's laying down, kind of talking to herself. So if you hear uh, the monitor in the background, that's Sayla. Uh, but she's good. I'm not neglecting my child. She's just talking as she's laying down for her nap. Uh, we are at the Warner Brothers logo where we are starting to see a leaf. 
So are you ready, James? I am. Here, one, we go on four, lethal weapon style, right? <laughs> one, two, three, go. Ready? One, two, three, go. And my PlayStation sucks. I don't know what it just did. I hit go and it exits. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so pause. I'm on the DC. Quick, James. Pause. I'm on the, I am, I am. I'm on the DC logo with the leaf on the left side. <laughs> All right. Let's see where it does. Uh, we have, the basement has an old PlayStation 3. For some reason, I, I think I hit the wrong button. It sounds dumb. All right. Hold on. Rat Pack logo. It's because the PS3 and PS4 buttons are backwards. All right. You got the DC logo? Uh-huh. Ready? One, two, three, go. Yeah. All right. DC logo is gone. We got leaves. I will say I yeah, like it. I like the leaves. I like the Warner Brothers logo. Um, the you know in the black. I like I like that we have this opening scene of the the Wayne's murder. I mean, people have sp have said things like. You know, do we really need to see Batman's parents die again? Uh, I mean, yes. I think every version we should see their origin. Um, I, I do agree with that. I don't feel like every version needs a, an extended play out of how the parents died. Um, uh, I'm glad that we got the version we did on this one. I mean, it is, it's it's like nearly word for word from Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns when he talks about his parents being killed. And let's just take a step back and acknowledge that this Batman and a lot, and th these films are what's odd is uh, these films are very heavily based on the '80s Frank Miller Batman and the New Fifty Two stuff. And you know, people. Oh, yeah. people criticize this Batman in this film and I'm just going to say right now if you've read The Dark Knight Returns this is the closest you're going to have to The Dark Knight Returns Batman I mean even right there where Thomas Wayne makes the fist that's right out of a comic yeah <clears throat> um, yeah I mean you know I'll talk about Batman right away I mean you know Batman's attitude, uh, his his um, physicality, his brutality in this film. I mean, you're not going to be you. It's plain and simple. You are not going to be. Nobody is going to be the comic book. Never, um, you know, uh, uh, no collateral damage type like Batman. You know what I mean? A a person. I mean, as highly trained as he is, there is going to be collateral damage as, as much, you know, with the bad guys trying to kill you. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way you're not going to get around, like, permanently maiming people to right. do what he does. <laughs> right. I mean, it's kind of, you know, Batman in a lot of ways, the criminals, I think... You know, he knows the criminals he's attacking, first of all, most of the time. And he, you know, they have to, that's kind of like them suffering their consequences. Um, oh, yeah. You can't, you can't have the attitude of like, I'm going to hold back on these people who are, who are trying to kill me. Like, plain and simple. Yeah, that's not, that's not a thing. If you hold back, you're going to die. I think this, this <laughs> shot, like this version of the Wayne's murder is my, like, I love the way it's just simple. It sums it up. I think for, you know, moving the story and kind of getting through it quickly, this works the best. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a great flashback in 89 Batman. Um, though I've never been a fan of the Joker being the one that killed Batman's family. Um, you know, and then in this intro, I'm not a huge fan of how it, like, 
I get the artisticness of the idea of the bats raising him up. Um, you know, you have to kind of separate that this is metaphorical right here. It's yeah. not actually happening. Um, it's called art and style. And it's a, it's a visual thing of what the bats are doing to him and his yeah. mind. Uh, um, you know, people would see this and they wouldn't be able to separate that because it's like, there's no transition for the fact that, you know what I mean? I, so, you know, in this, this Batman is very much, I think, the vein of they've taken what they really liked about Nolan's and then what was working in Burton's and making this kind of where he feels grounded and real, but at the same time can't exist in a world with, you know, Superman. Now this with, with Bruce getting off the helicopter and we see the attack on Metropolis. I don't care if you're a fan or not of this movie. This is a great action scene from beginning. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I think this scene, no, uh, even, even harsh critics of the film, you know, said after the first, you know, first five minutes of the film, first seven minutes of the film, then that's where, you know, they lost it. But this, this whole sequence, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm going back to the murder real fast. Like, um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm pretty positive. Um, almost like I'm almost 100% that the, the, where he puts the gun up to Martha's head and the pearls get caught, uh, on the gun barrel when on the slide, when they, uh, when he's fight, when she's fighting back and then he pulls the trigger and that's what snaps the, the pearl necklace. I'm pretty positive that's described in detail like that from Dark Knight Returns. Yes, I think it is. You get the good Oh, we do want to throw out. I James and I forgot to discuss this. We are watching the extended cut of the film because I feel like that is the better version of the movie uh, for multiple reasons. So we are watching the ultimate edition. Um, in my mind, is the only cut of this movie because it tells a stronger story. But I just want to take notice of how many extras we have here in the Metropolis scene of just that look of people. Like, it feels real here. It feels thick. Um, it yeah. He, um, goes and, back to that tangibility that we've talked about before. Like, I love right. of him running the camera work of him yeah. into action. The, and the scenes of him. Yeah. The scenes of him running while running towards the action while everybody's running away. He, that's, that's Batman too. That's wholeheartedly Batman. Yes. I mean, I've seen people criticize this movie because it's a no-name person that Bruce Wayne cares about. That's in the Wayne financial right here, the Jack character. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, just because he's not straight out of the comics of somebody like it's the guy who wants Wayne financial in Metropolis, you know, Bruce might know him, you know, yeah. how, how is Bruce tries? He has, it seems like Bruce tries to, you know, know a lot of his employees and stay in touch. Right. Like he has his personal number right there, or at least a business personal, you know, direct line. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, he knows he's working. He's talking to him in the building. He's the head of that building and he's giving, you know, it's yeah. like, man, people like, would you prefer it was Lucius Fox? Then you could be pissed that they killed Lucius Fox in the first few minutes. Right. Um, this the one thing about this, this whole scene is, um, the, the visual effects team, I mean, they had to take, they had to do a lot of, um, they had to, have, had to have done a lot of research, um, of matching where, um, where planes and missiles crashed. Um, and when Zod goes into the building and his heat vision takes the building down, um, like you can, you can run this scene side by side with Man of Steel, Zod in the building. And like, that's the way his heat vision is coming out of the building. Exactly. And I mean, 
you got to think that a lot of this is an extension, like probably cast crew. I mean, not cast so much, but like crew and stuff like that. It's an extension of those who worked on Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. Like it seems like most of the production people are back. Um, now I do want to throw out though, this film is shot more mixture of handheld and standard camera work. Um, and it is, you know, longtime collaborator with Snyder, Larry Fong mm-hmm. as the, uh, DP, the director of photography slash cinematographer. So this does feel more like a Zack Snyder movie. Right. And then here we've got. The, the satellite crashing back into Metropolis and Zod and Superman. And we have that cool back. like shot where you see Superman and Zod and he's taking him down. There's Bruce just looking up. And I mean, mm-hmm. I get where Bruce is coming from with this movie. Like, you know, he doesn't know what to expect. This is aliens 18 months later. Yes. <clears throat> and this right here, I thought this was awesome. The, uh, the world engine still just, in pieces in the Indian ocean. And, uh, you know, this, I, I had called this that the world engine is the reason for the, the development of the kryptonite after man of steel came out and they announced this, um, the fact that they use the phantom drive to, um, send him to earth before the destruction of Krypton. So there's no way that pieces of the planet could have followed him there. Yep. Uh, Yeah, that's, I called that, that the world engine was going to be the cause for the creation of kryptonite, changing some minerals into, um, Kryptonian minerals and, and, and them, yeah, being irradiated by the Earth's yellow sun. It totally makes sense. I mean, it makes more sense for that how kryptonite showed up than any other way because I like the fact that in Man of Steel there is no kryptonite. There is no weakness for Superman. That means there is no weakness for Zod. So mm-hmm. that, so that really puts them. Can we just I like here the shout out to Coca-Cola? Glass bottle of Coca-Cola. Later. Here we have Michael Cassidy drinking Coca-Cola. Who is playing Jimmy Olsen? Now, Michael Cassidy, if you're not familiar with him, was Grant Gabriel, a.k.a. Julian Luther, on Smallville. I got it. Yes, show. sir. <laughs> See? Now, this is technically, we find out right here that um, he's there as a photographer with Lois. They've never met. So, right there, I kind of have a problem with there's no established relationship of Lois and Jimmy. So, there's no Jimmy and Lois. Um, you know, I've heard, and I, I'm okay with it. This is a theory, and this comes to pass in some way, shape, or form. But the idea that Jimmy Olsen is actually... This guy is not really Jimmy Olsen. He was just using Jimmy Olsen's credentials to get in. Um, the, he is just a CIA operative and that the code he was under was Jimmy Olsen and there really is a Jimmy Olsen. Um, if they want to retcon it kind of that way, I'm fine with it. Right. Um, yeah, I had heard that as well. Um, and, you know, to, to, appease some fans out there, they may end up doing a retcon, something like that, um, it's or just, not even acknowledge it to the fact. <laughs> it's just one of those, I mean, only in the extended edition do they say his name, and if you're looking in the credits, do you see his name? Um, and since, you know, a lot of people aren't haven't seen the extended edition, I could see it. Um, you know, right now, straight up, this guy is Anatoly Konaisov grabbing the camera who is in the comics better known as KG Beast. Yes. I also want to say this actor was in um, 300 Rise of the Empire or Rise of the uh, the Empire. I can't remember. He was a a big character in that. And I say that movie because that movie is going to come up later in one of our discussions. I... Won't hint at anything, but it'll be referenced. 
Um, so yeah, the um, so the majority of the talk between Jimmy and Lois um, before they got in the truck and, and headed off that was all added into the ultimate edition from the theatrical where he says his name. See, look, Lois doesn't know what's going on. They used her. The CIA did. Yeah, she says he's a photographer. See, and I like the idea of him as Jimmy Olsen, too. Yeah. I would be all right with that actor as Jimmy Olsen, but not after that. <laughs> and with this shot, you know he's dead. There's there's the blood on the crown. You see the blood moving from the infrared. Yeah. And like more of this right here. Yeah, I don't even think these people were in the, the theatrical version. Uh, they weren't. I will state that it has been a while since I've seen the theatrical edition. Um, yeah. Since its release on home video, I have not watched the theatrical cut. So only that last time in the theater, my fourth time seeing the movie was the last time I saw the theatrical edition. Um, so I just want to reiterate that so that when we say I'm not sure about stuff, it's because neither of us have watched it in a long time. See, and I think just it really helps this Africa scene make more sense of what's yeah. going on. Because, like, they just start shooting everybody. Yeah. And they, the whole idea, because it doesn't make sense, like, see, like, he doesn't know what's going on. No. Um, the whole idea is that Superman, you know, came, caused this problem, and then the terrorists reacted and started killing, you know, um, innocent people, started fighting back. And then, you know, if you watch KGB here, here burns here people, with... supposedly, supposedly Superman using his heat vision, you know, kind of, uh, you know, just to set him up. And then here we see the, the drone that's coming in to destroy. Yeah, to completely eliminate the, the terrorist target, the terrorist general. And then we, and then... There's one scene that is different in this than the theatrical t uh, cut. If I remember, it's Superman's entrance. Yeah. Um, because here we're going to see in just a minute. A well, really in the theatrical, in the theatrical cut, one of these scenes specifically when they showed KG Beast either leaving or or um, something, they had the there was the fire and the smoke. Uh, see right there, and you see Superman fly right into the missile and the drone, and yeah, you see him fly driving off, and then Superman drops in. And I will say the the second time I saw this, there was a little kid who just yelled out in the theater, "Superman!" <laughs> it was awesome. But in the other version, you hear the pops of him coming down, and you see a little bit of him flying down. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they, what you, what you see in the theatrical version, you do see a scene of the smoke and everything. So when they do talk about him being there and everybody like, you know, they, they were killed with guns, they were killed with bullets. How can, how can people assume that Superman was there and killed everybody with guns? I mean, he wouldn't need to do that. Um, they, uh, pay, they weren't paying attention because, um, I mean, you had to, you had to make a connection yourself, but with just the black smoke in the background. But, you know, they did show that in the theatrical version, the, the smoke billowing from the compound. Yeah. Um, that you would assume that they would link the connection if they're, if somebody's trying to set him up, that he used his heat vision to kill people. Uh, and, he, because you know, of that and it was because of him that the, terrorist group attack the people because look we have people running around who are now the americans are there they're running to the american soldiers we have american helicopters or un mm -hmm. or whatever they're supposed to be uh showing up it's supposed to be a little bit of a confusing scene and i, I feel like we need a little bit more 
because then we cut to this girl giving a testimony. Now, I will say that the fact that she gives this great performance testimony here and the fact that nobody looked into her history, that she lives just over in Gotham, like this is, you know, the modern age where everyone has Facebook, Twitter, Google. You couldn't find out that she lives just a town over, you know, from Metropolis. Yeah. You know, I mean, for for a film that was was forced to become, you know, the the jump off point for the DCEU. Um, I mean, you're gonna get a few. You're gonna get some holes like that, and especially come the come from the theatrical cut where, you know, they they edited it out so much. There's our two shots. Hour. There's our two shots right there of a, uh, you know, Metropolis versus Gotham, where we're supposed to see Victor Stone. Um, he's, which doesn't quite make sense because of the timeline, unless it's after this game when Vic gets in his car wreck. But we'll talk more about that later, and then into Justice League. So you know, we'll- I thought the, um, I thought the. Part of the reason why they got stomped so bad in that was because of his car wreck before the game. Oh, that Victor well, wasn't involved in that game, and that's why they got wrecked so bad. That makes more sense. It uh, makes a lot more sense. And I love, here we go, the bats flying out of the chimney. And, you know, sometimes it's, when you watch this movie, yeah, it's supposed to be a Batman and Superman movie. But if you watch it from the, the lens... It's of a Batman movie with Superman. It's a better yeah. movie. Um, and I will say my biggest thing against this film is I wish we would have had – it had either been a two-part film. Like this story had been broken up into two stories, uh, one being Batman Superman's conflict and then part two being – Luthor flipping it on them and creating Doomsday and then Wonder Woman's intro in like a second film or this fo- this film had come after we had another s- soul Superman film. Yeah. Yeah, they they did um they did skip the whole uh 18 months of Superman and being Superman um you know being the character that every you know being the hero that people love. Um, what they did in this movie, um, uh, which you can see in, in, uh, Wally's apartment is just show montages and, um, newspaper articles of the numerous things that he's done to save people from, from natural disasters and, and all this other stuff, you know, to set up the fact that he has been this, this great hero over the last few years or over the last two years, but the, the controversy surrounding, um, surrounding an alien, surrounding a being with this immense power, you know, that's what they decided to focus on. And that's why, and, and that's why people are like, it's so dark. He doesn't save people. Well, no, he's been saving hundreds and thousands of people, millions of people for the last 18 months. And let's just throw out real quick here. We're at the scene where we have Batman in the background corner. And, you know, we have, it's kind of scary. Like this first introduction to Batman with the police officer, you know, going in and, uh, I like the idea that they're still kind of scared of Batman. You know, the, well, uh, like I saw him, I never saw him before. Right. Yeah, and he branded him like that. Sound like it, the older cop that sounds new to him. He branded him, and that's and that's what's cool is like that is something new that Batman's been doing. Yeah, yeah. The intro to Batman is pretty good. The uh, almost the supernatural uh, element that he wants to portray, so that way people are scared of him. Um. That was just weird. She starts running her bathwater and then unpacks in another room. 
<laughs> the logic behind that, I I can see it happening, but still, I just want to take a note. Like, look at the 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 atmosphere of the rain in the background. Um, you know, getting to see and know her apartment. Um, you know, it's it's all important elements that I that I want to point out for as we go through this journey of Man of Steel, BVS. Justice League, which I think is the order that we should do it. I think, you know, if we want to do a Wonder Woman, maybe, or Suicide Squad, I think we should do them after Justice League. So, um, since Justice League is kind of the sequel to this. Yeah, I mean, you know that, I mean, they, they both do have their place in between, um, at least with the bookends of Wonder Woman and, and then the fact that Superman is, is dead and spoilers, if you haven't seen Batman versus Superman, but why would you be listening if you had? <laughs> exactly. I, I, uh, love, I love Clark showing up, smiling, glasses. Flowers. <laughs> but I do think, I mean, like, seriously, like, this scene, it's just one of those, like, let's just put Amy Adams in a tub, naked. Um, like, then let's try to have a serious, you know, conversation while she's naked in a tub. Right. Why advice in the theater is like trying to make a big deal out of her in the tub. Yeah. You know, cause people, people don't ever take baths. What do you mean? <laughs> people don't take baths. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I don't know. I would assume after, you know, being shot at and and lots of dead bodies and, you know, all this other stuff that you might need some wine and a hot bath to kind of cool off a little bit, especially, you know, how she how she owns up to, you know, going there. She she shouldn't have she shouldn't have gone there just because, you know, just chasing a story, you know. Yeah, it was all a setup. That's the thing. I don't know. It was a yeah. setup because, you know, it's it's told more to us. Luther was setting this all up from the beginning. Like, you know, he knowing the psychology of her that she would go and that Superman would go to save her, you know. And then here Clark gets in the tub too. Water <laughs> all over the place. The apartment. I feel sorry for his Levi's. Just getting soaked. <laughs> Wet jeans are nothing to play around with. Yeah, right. Well, apparently, you know, I mean, if, if he couldn't get him off, you know, he just. Whoosh, yeah, he, he's already. Right. I love he's the look good. of this bat cave. Like, Me too. One of the things about the idea that everything hangs from the ceiling, nothing's really on the ground like a bat, is awesome. Yeah. Um, I like that what they did, they actually, they actually designed the screens. So he had something to look at. Um, they weren't blank, they weren't blank green screens that they filled in later with visual effects. They actually put that stuff, they actually developed that stuff and put it on the screen. So it was all physically there in front of them. That's awesome. The one thing I will say, like, with this home release that kind of made me upset, it's the first Snyder film that doesn't have kind of like a side-by-side, like, Zack Snyder commentary. Mm. Well, I mean, the Zack Snyder had, had, for obviously for years, he had been... He had been under under the microscope, under the knife, so so as to, uh, so to speak, when it came to uh, Man of Steel, the release of Man of Steel, and the production of BBS. Um, I mean, Man of Steel was was pretty divisive, um, you know, as a Superman movie, as a Zack Snyder movie, and then you know the production of this, uh, Warner Brothers. I mean, unfortunately, you know, Warner Brothers not wanting to put in the time and the work um, then that Marvel did to build their brand. You know, they just figured they could go off of brand and name alone and just, 
you know, jump in the middle without actually creating the beginning and, and developing characters that people care about. Um, and you know, and they, that's why, you know, I say, had this been just a kind of more of a Batman film with mm-hmm. Superman there at parts, but mm-hmm. then more Batman story, because I like the idea of starting with an already established Batman. If they had kind of left Wonder Woman out of it and then not teased every member of the Justice League, like if they had just made it Batman and Superman, you know, and then from there move forward, I think it would have worked better. But they really shoved a lot into this film. But they saturated this with the DC world more so than like we talked about with Man of Steel. I think, you know, had they known more about what they were going to do afterwards, they could have retooled some characters and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, unfortunately, you're going to we got what we got. And not unfortunately, I mean, I love this film. Um, You know, the entire the entirety of the DCEU suffered from it. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a small, mi- it's a misstep, you know, like I said, they tried to jump in the middle without actually starting at the beginning. Um, but it, it could have, it could have been something more. Um, but I, I love the film. I, I love the way, I love the way it was developed. I love the people involved. Um, we got Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor here, you know, take him or leave him. People's, uh, people's complaints uh with with his quirks for his character um yeah. you know his his eccentric um his eccentric tics um I, I, he, he does play a genius very well though you know he is incredibly smart i wish he had tapped in a little bit more into his mark zuckerberg kind of betrayal in this and made it because i didn't have anything against him um, I just kind of wish that, you know, cause the, I think if, if I remember right, when we see the invitation, I wonder what was changed or done because it says Lex Luthor Jr. So he kind of is Lex Luthor Jr., but they don't ever really kind of say it. Um, you know, he's talked about his dad, which is it Lex or is it Lionel? Um, but, but he does say the name on the he does say the name on on the marquee is Lex is after his father, um, and but he but he tried to use the fact that he named the the company after his son to bring in more publicity, more money, you know, because it was cuter that way. It kind of I think it toys with this. So yeah, but here's where he goes to get Zod's body. And the music, the score is, I, I love, I mean, Lex Luthor's score here. I, got, I have to pull off an earplug here just to hear. <laughs> See, and then, and then the ship, cra- the ship crashed down, you know, uh, it's made of an alien material. It, it can't be, it can't be destroyed. It can't be dismantled. You know, it could weigh ungodly amounts of weight that we have nothing to be able to, to move it. So they literally had to form the compound around it. Um, the, the Zod. This this cutting off his fingerprints was was pretty interesting. Um, kind of wanted to see see where it went. Um, there's no no real precedent for it uh, in uh, Man of Steel, <laughs> and then the Cherry Jolly Rancher. It's a little weird. I thought that was weird, but that's just that's a character thing, you know. I mean, that is that's just. That's an actor's choice, you know. I mean, actors are are there to choose what they do, um, their their characters, mannerisms, and things. Let's see, and 
the interview on how Superman decides who lives and who dies. Now we've got Wallace O'Keefe's apartment, and you see all you see all the uh, all the uh, newspapers there. There's even one that uh, says he stopped the tectonic plates from um, from shifting. So a nod to Superman seventy eight. And yeah, he's he's got. He's got nothing. I mean, he's dressed, he's dressed like a bum. And Superman, uh, the, the memorial for everybody who died during the, the Black Zero events, um, commemorating Superman for, for saving Metropolis and for saving the world from being terraformed. Uh, I mean, you gotta thank people involved who got hurt, you know, they would be, they would be inclined to not, um, not think that Superman was, um, was a hero, you know, that he is the cause. You're going to get people on both sides, you know, people who love him as a hero and people who think he's the cause of it, you know, which coming from Superman's point of view, I mean, he, he'd have to deal with that fact that that he is, um, uh, that, that people would be on both sides of the fence because he can't be like, Oh, I was sent here as an infant and you know, this is the only world I know. This is my home. You know what I mean? He can't, he can't do, he can't give all, all of his information away. Otherwise, and he's given away who he is. So he just has to deal with that, that he's, you know, that there is going to be people who think he's a hero and other people that think he's the cause. Um, but they don't know that he was, that this is his home. He's been here ever since he was an infant. You know, um, what do you call it? There, there's no one night with Superman type story in this. You know, in Superman, the movie, Lois does that interview. Once again, I love his Cavill's costuming. Um, we saw Perry assigned him about the Metropolis Gotham game. So yeah, you are right where they did lose because of Victor. Um, yeah, you know, here's a scene that was cut Clark on the boat heading across the bay to Gotham. And I had, that was one thing about the, that was the one thing about the theatrical cut, making it a Batman movie and not a Superman movie. I mean, almost everything Clark Kent was cut. And then, you know, so little of Superman was just montage. And then look, he's got the paper. He, you know, he knows. What are you two arguing about? Kids. All right. Better be nothing. Yeah, kids, man, it's crazy. <laughs> James had to cover for me real quick. I had to go change a diaper. Baby girl woke up. You know. I mean, <laughs> This is this scene. These scenes right here is like the most Clarkish we get to see Cavill be because everything else has been very minor and very cut, very small. Yeah, um, and then like, I mean, with that scene there, I mean, you get you get two perspectives in one in the one hallway of Batman. You know, like you better get out of Gotham before he finds you. And then the woman, like the only the only people who need to be afraid of him are the people who you know are bad people. Like you know, nobody's afraid of him that doesn't need to be afraid of. Him. And and then we get this quick cut here to like the underground fight. Yeah. So looking at the way this film is edited, does this mean this fight's going on during the day? Um. Because what it. Because don't they cut back to Clark here in a little bit? And it's still like more daytime, but that's just kind of thinking there. But the editing and pacing, um, there was a there was a rumor going around. And I kind of like the idea that uh, the fighter that Bruce helped was supposed to be uh, Ted uh, Wildcat. I drew a blank. Uh, nope. Okay. Oh. So the editing is uh, is correct. I'm, uh, so 
this scene right here, you know, Clark talking to Perry about crime in Gotham, that line, <laughs> that line, water, wet, like crime and Gotham go hand in hand with water and getting wet. <laughs> I mean, I like Clark's talk about what matters. You know, he says uh, some lines here. And I do think that Perry seems really hard on Clark. Like, how did Clark get this job? Because Perry doesn't seem to like him. It's hard to get a reporter job. You know, I always kind of thought that Lois helped out. And then there was the theory that Perry knew that Clark was Superman. Um, but they've never really said it. Because in, if you look at this movie and we go by this film, um, Superman never interacts with anyone other than Lois. And <laughs> Coach. And I mean, Clark and Lois's dynamic here, you know, it's, it's weird because he wants to protect her. She wants to go off. Perry's protective of her. <laughs> Clark Kent must have a thing for nerds. <laughs> the nerdy buff dude. Yeah. Yeah, what makes Clark nerdy? I just want to know. The glasses? That's not nerdy anymore. Nerdy's cool now. So, it's weird. Clark Kent's our hero now. I do... Lex talking to the senator is cool and weird at the same time. It's a very well lit scene. I like how he turns once she tells him the news he doesn't want to hear. Blocking the import license. And it's all, it is kind of about a, a child with father issues in this. You think about it, you have three men, all who have a different perspective of the loss of their father. Bruce, with his parents, propelled him to do what he did. Lex never really mentions his mother, I don't think. Um, you know, Lex is always talking about his father, and, and later it's revealed his father beat him. Clark, of course, his father died in the tornado. But I love that just menacing tapping that Lex does. It's, it's just, it builds this tension. And Holly Hunter does a good job. This is incredible there. Yeah, this is a good scene. I, I like this scene. The, the um, You can really see, you know, what uh, you can really tell that she knows like what his ideas are, you know, how dark he, he is right now. She has an idea of it. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> if she knew exactly, then uh, there'd be a different, there'd be a different scene coming up. But, you know, like I was saying, I was just sitting there thinking a little bit more. Okay, so one thing, like, this is my personal thought, was I always thought that would kind of neat if, you know, we know that Dark Side, this is kind of allusion to Dark Side and everything, like the idea of, like, the anti-life equations, what's slipping into Earth, um, and that's kind of what helped propel Batman into being darker, and then that's kind of, like, the beginning of Justice League where we see everyone kind of fighting I just thought that would kind of been neat if they would have got to work on that, but we'll have to leave that where it lies because that's not the story we got. That shot of Bruce opening the crypt straight up looks like a panel from a comic. I mean, this is a well-crafted film. Like it or hate it, there's a vision to this movie, and it was executed. The, the shots are planned, are studied, you know. Um, they're not flat. There's depth to them. And absolutely um i mean so much from so much from these two films uh from zack snyder um especially this one i mean so much is just 
rip right from the page. And I feel like this is more in the in the vein that okay, so the giant bat that comes out is extremely crazy, and then Batman Bruce or Bruce wakes up next to a woman. Um, uh, you know, interesting. But I mean, maybe he would be like that. Take some painkillers, probably. Makes sense. I mean, he is a person that uh fights criminals and gets beat up and. He's probably got some aches and pains, you know? Oh, yeah. He's been shot and stabbed and fallen from buildings. And, I mean, yeah, he's he's got to have aches and pains, especially the old, especially being 20 years in. I always like the idea of the fan theory that that was Selena Kyle. You know? I was kind of mm. like that. <laughs> There's like the next generation. I, I like that. This right here. I like that Bruce and Alfred are more of a team than like master servant. Like Bruce handed him a cup of coffee. You know. Right. right. Um, yeah. There's there's a there's an admiration um, that he has for Alfred. Um, that you see in a lot of places, but you also see um, where it is like master servant kind of thing. And I mean, that master servant kind of thing is, is strictly for appearances. You know what I mean? Like, I think, okay, here's the invitation. If you look, okay, Alexander Luther. So it wasn't there it was somewhere else. I know it said like junior. I love mm. this shot of the suit where the bat suit is and he's yeah. kind of staring at it. It's a little odd because like he opens it up just to stare at it. And then he's like, all right, I got to walk away. Well, you know, I think at that point and then the Robin suit, I mean, fan theories, all, everything inside. I mean, the fact that they incorporated a dead Robin is is absolutely amazing i mean that is one of the you know that is one of the the one shot in this film that i I didn't need no no ben's bare butt okay didn't need that in this movie it's they gotta draw the woman crowd in there but i like how it looks like he even showered in the bat cave almost like the bat cave is where he lives the top part is just for show yeah and I, I, like you said, I like the dead Robin because it adds to the thickness, his history, his gruffness, his anger, you know, his temperament. Yeah. It also gives uh, a jumping uh, I was point. Gonna... Oh, go ahead. No, I was saying, if to build on more Batman related stuff that we don't have to start, if we want to do Nightwing or Damien or uh, Red Hood. Like we can bat woman, bat girl, like there's a basis for things to start. We don't have to start from the beginning and try to build towards all of those. Right. Yeah, the um the shot of him I kinda trailed off there with the Robin costume real fast. The the shot of him looking at the bat suit, I mean that he he was talking about breaking into Lex Luthor's place, you know. His his immediate go to is is what 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 is Batman gonna do? What am I gonna do? You know what I mean? And yes. I him being Batman. So like this Bruce Wayne, he's always Batman. You know, there is no separation except for the mask of Bruce Wayne that he puts on. Uh, so him looking at that bat at the Batman costume was like like I I, I, I can't be me now. I I can't go and I can't be me now. I have to, I have to go be Bruce Wayne. I agree, and I like. I mean, this we get to see Bruce Wayne. We hit more Batman Bruce Wayne levels. A little bit more detective work here. A little bit more of the playboy douche. Yeah, look, you know, Batman. We get. I do like that Alfred's talking to him, and Superman. Superman. Hears him. Yep, I like that. I thought that was great. Like, and he just picks up on it. You know what I mean? Like, he's in a he's in a party. It's there's a quiet kind of calm over the it, room it, as Black Luther starts doing his thing. And 
I feel like that's evidence for a stronger point that we'll make here in a little bit that it shows that he's always, he has his senses in tune to listen and to react to things that are out of the ordinary. Yeah. So that later, when a very important line to me was cut from this film is actually reinserted, we will talk about that because it shows that he is alert. He does use his senses to pick things up. Uh, you know, I don't even, I don't think I ever noticed, but um, Anatoly is here at this, uh, at this party. Yep. Just noticed that too. And I was just thinking, was that in the extended cut? Maybe like the framing was different because it is kind of weird that he's there. If he's like a known criminal, like that yeah. Luther would have him. I like the fact that they do talk, that they have Perry's line to Clark, that he's going to this gala, that some old lady probably has an affection for nerds, uh, where Lex Luthor requested, or at least sent the request down that, um, to get Clark Kent at the party to, to be there, you know, uh, to, to meet Bruce Wayne. See, I like this kind of this them talking. It's kind of like, does Clark know like that he's Batman or has his suspicions after listening? We didn't get to touch on the Alfred speech from earlier about you know, turning the good men cruel. It's a very true statement. And I mean, that's the arc of Bruce Wayne in this, a good man who's lived by a code who has seen so much damage that he's at a point now of something that he can't control or really fight against. That's what, you know, the, the meta humans, the, the aliens here. See, and then there's Luther, you know, hitting, hinting at things. He knows. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, makes sense for him being one of the smartest people, uh, on, on the planet. He, he should know. Um, you know, and people will be like, oh, well, that makes for, for this or that. You know what I mean? It, you can't you can't speculate on where a story is gonna go. Um, I mean, somebody like that, somebody like Lex Luthor, is not just gonna out him just to out him. So that way, see, I love like, this oh. right here. Clark, you know, sees and then here's our I consider like the fake out that makes the payoff at the end of Justice League so much better. Um, right here. I'll, I'll touch back on this scene that we're watching at the moment, but you know, the part Clark's watching the TV about Mexico. We see mm -hmm. the woman in the red dress took his leech. Bruce is chasing her. I will say, I wish that they would have kept that. She's wonder woman and everything under wraps. Um, and not released that. See, he grabs the tie and goes off. I thought for sure it was going to be a shirt rip scene. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the the issue is he goes off, we see her, and then the next scene is we cut away and he's coming out of the building with the girl. Like we don't get to see him like go into the building. We don't get to see him grab the girl. We don't get to see like him like the it's okay now, I've got you, like her. We see him, you know, bring her out, which is great. Because we get this awesome shot of like the people all kind of bowing down to him, like reaching out to touch him. Here's another one of those Christ metaphor images, you know, mm -hmm. reaching out to touch his robe slash cape, um, you know, and him standing there, and then he just kind of. Well, I like they, this dialogue they, right here. Yeah, Zack Snyder. Um, what is it? Confirmed that. Um, that was a link to the, uh, the skulls in Man of Steel. See, um, oh, yeah, the Day I'm, of the Dead. 
I like him pulling this ship. It's kind of weird why he's not flying it, but it's, you know, this is our montage of things that he's doing that people. I love the shot of him pulling the ship, though. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, the. And this one of our, this was one of the first images released of Superman right here. Uh, where he shuttle? catches. Yeah, where he bring comes down with the shuttle. And my God, does Henry look huge in this shot. Yes. And then we got Woodward <laughs> right there. We got a, another shot of... Uh, I love that. He's just a guy trying to do the right thing. Woodward. Yeah. And that line, that line alone is, is you know, that set that is Superman. That line alone sets up, you know, everything that Superman is. See, you know, I, everybody's trying to treat him as this God, this Messiah character. And that's what he, that, but that's exactly what Superman is. He's a guy trying to do the right thing. I, I like this right here, but I wish we would have got to actually see him save them. You know, like it's a cool shot of the people on the house and her reaching up and he's kind of floating above, which is really cool. Like, you know, in slow motion, but like it'd been mm -hmm. awesome if he comes down, like we actually got to see him like, Move the water or take the family away yeah. in a boat. I always, you know, I always thought an opening scene for like a Justice League sequel, like if there was like an earthquake or a natural disaster and the Justice League kind of saving the village and fighting against a natural disaster. Mm -hmm. You know, now I do love this where it cuts. We see Clark sitting and what does he do? Calls his mom. Well, you know, I mean, he's a guy and the fact that the entire world is constantly questioning him and questioning his actions, especially in the midst of this, uh, um, this political, uh, involvement in Africa, you know, and it's all over the place. I mean, the constant questioning of, of who he is and what he, what he is and what he stands for, um, with the accusations, I mean, that would weigh, that would weigh on somebody's mind. Exactly. And who else do we have to talk to but our moms, our parents? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and you can talk to your mom about any. So here's a cut scene. We have, uh, Jenna Star Malone, Jenna Malone at <laughs> Star Labs, Jenna mm -hmm. Malone, who was in Snyder's previous, uh, film, Sucker Punch, who's usually redheaded, so everyone thought she was going to be Barbara Gordon. That was a huge speculation. This proves, you know, it shows Lois using her skills about the bullet and where it came from and works backwards. And Yeah. Well, you know, and that's one thing in, in the Ultimate Edition that wasn't in the theatrical edition was there was very little investigation yeah. from Clark's point of view and in, into Batman and from um, Lois's point of view into the bullet and things. Um, they touched on it a couple of times from Lois's angle, but uh, you know, they really fleshed out like developing the mystery, uh, the mystery of Batman and the mystery of, of who's behind who's setting up Superman. Yeah, I mean, right here, right here is a big point. Okay, like we have this little extra scene of the guy with the bat brand being, you know, he's being put in jail when Wally's getting out. In a Metropolis jail. Uh, Not Gotham where he was, in a Metropolis jail. So, yeah, so that right there is a big deal because we'll see more. And first of all, with all the names possible, could we have named this guy something other than Wally? Oh, there's an F word. So yeah, there's an extended version right there. Um, yeah. But my thing is, when you have a story and people have like like a culture, a continuity, you know, Wally's a big name. Why would you name an off character Wally? Why why can we call him like Jack or Brian, Brian O'Keefe? Yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> Let's name him Jeremy. Yeah.
And then this, this story, um, you know, his, his life over the last 18 months since the accident, um, you know, he, he got the chair from Luther, but it's Luther's fault that he is in his position. And then right here, um, you know, we see, we have the Clark investigating the bat brand. We see that Anatoly was in jail and then there's the shank. And we find out that Luther is making sure that people who have the bat brand are being murdered in jail and prison. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, it's all an inside, it's all plots. So, you know, the Batman, the Bat brand, you know, is being linked to these deaths because Luthor is making sure that everyone with it's being killed. Um, we have Swan Wake back and good to see him back. Yep. Too bad he couldn't have seen. Once again, could have been uh, Ireland, you know. Mm -hmm. If if they had the foresight of thickening up the DC universe. Um. Right here, she's explaining, you know, the she got greedy, went for a scoop, and then Superman saved her, causing problems, which was all engineered by Luthor, which is what people hmm. forget. Yeah. <laughs> and then, boom, Clark's getting yelled at for sports. I love this, too. Nothing about the Metropolis Friends, the library. So could you if it was 1938, but it's not 1938. <laughs> <laughs> like, shine a light on Superman, like, big time. <laughs> I think Lawrence Fisher is a very p true comic book Perry White. Yeah. Yeah, which... I could have done without the John Stewart. Uh,. You know, I could have done without this John Stewart little plug joke about the blue and red and the S, you know. There's a wasn't, slight to Carl's Jr. I'm cool with that. Wasn't uh, that from um wasn't that actually a, a segment of his show from um what was it, Action Comics nine hundred where he said he wasn't where Superman wasn't a citizen of the United States, that he was a citizen of the world? I don't remember. And like you know, I where really people wish, made like a big deal about that. I really wish we didn't know who Gal is here. I really wish they hadn't told us like her casting. She was like mystery woman or just gave her some like exotic name or something. Um, mm -hmm. so we could speculate. And then the later when they say Miss Prince, then it hits us like, Oh snap. Right. You know, like if they would have left her out of the marketing and it really been a surprise when she drops down as Wonder Woman. Cause I mean, you didn't have to like, advertise her as a Wonder Woman to sell this movie. No, no, you didn't. I mean, this movie would have, this movie would have sold on Batman and Superman alone, world's finest, you know? Um, I mean, how there's countless countless times that Batman and Superman have fought against each other um, in the comic books only to come out of it um, as friends better on the other side. Uh, the, the whole movie would have sold on that. Um, I mean, just it suffered from the three year span where they had to keep giving out bits here and there to keep people, you know, Hey, the movies, the movie's still being made. You know? Yeah. I mean like, Three they, years, but the movie's still being made. If I can remember the timeline real quick, it was the symbol announcement in July. Uh, and part of it goes to the fact that they had already been working on this script and working on this in a pre-production. 
uh, before Man of Steel hit theaters because Man of Steel was pushed back six months from release. You know, it was supposed to come out in December of 12, but Warner Brothers had made so much money that year off of, uh, what do you call it? The Dark, Dark Knight, Knight Rises. Rises. They didn't need to release because they, so they held it over, you know, to the summer. That's why the, the Wayne satellite was added in post, uh, you know, the Wayne logo. And like, if you watch the behind the scenes, they were already testing and creating the Batmobile. So that when they announced this film, they already had a lot going. Um, and that, I mean, that's kind of, you think about it then, like that's a long time for, all right. So here we go. The awkward nightmare scene. The scene that is like a tease for something that never came really to be or fleshed out. So watching it in the context of just this film is weird. I mean, there's the Omega symbol right there. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. The lava spitting up. The fire Apocalyptic. Yeah. So it's kind of like a future that could be. And see, this is where I said it'd be kind of interesting if it had been like um, somebody from Apocalypse was trying to reach out and talk to Batman to Dark Side's coming. You know, this is uh, what's going to happen in the future if you don't stop it. Or or if we had seen like this all of a sudden and then we saw the Flash with Batman and the Flash took off. And so when it cuts back to Batman, it's not like he's waking up. He's sitting there at the computer screen when the Flash shows up. So it's like the Flash left from this world and went back in time to tell him about this. Mm. You know, something like that. But I feel like as it stands, this scene is just so awkward right now. Like, honestly, yeah. we can cut this out and be okay because it doesn't get paid off well enough in Justice League. Or anything. Well, well, you know, we we do know that the original concept was was for two part Justice League. So, um, I mean, the this this could have been fleshed out more, even in the in the second part of Justice League. But you know, I mean, just the the extreme reactions that Warner Brothers had, and I don't that. That thing, right, that right there, you know, the extreme reactions that they continued to have after every single movie came out was like, was unwarranted. You know what I mean? Sure, there was a lot of, um, you know, negative word of mouth from people, but there was also tons of positive word of mouth. And, and none of these movies were flops. Until ju- until Justice League, because, you know, obviously Justice League didn't make back its budget and its marketing and everything else. But because you created so much controversy movies were blocked. going into it, people were- like didn't know what was going on. You had the whole like everyone knew the background story about Snyder and Whedon and the and Warner Brothers images. And and then, I mean, I remember seeing this and be like, wow parademons yeah well not even not even just just this alone i mean the knee-jerk reactions the extreme reactions that they had you know i mean you're gonna do you're gonna set up things and you're literally gonna change it retool it so that way you just have to leave this stuff out there hanging like you don't get to finish you don't get to complete what what was set up you know what i mean like they, there was no, there was no necessary, there was no need for them to make such extreme reactions I mean, to two things when, you know, sure, this movie should have made over a billion dollars, but it didn't hit a billion dollars. You know, it was close, it was closer to 900 million, but it didn't hit a billion. So, oh, it's a terror, you know, oh, it's a financial flop. Well, no, it's, it was over 800 and what, 68. Uh, billion dollars like that's nothing that that's nothing to 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 wink at you know what i mean 
I mean, this is straight up supposed to be like more injustice based Superman right here of what's going to mm-hmm. happen. You know, it kind of alludes that maybe because of Bruce, Lois got killed. Uh, you know, I would have liked maybe some hints, like I said, at the anti life equation here. Been kind of cool if maybe he was in the black suit right here. Uh, I guess this is supposed to be kind of a Christ like metaphor reversed with Batman being more like the Christ figure with, you know, the. See. I don't like this. Like, he wakes up from one dream to have the Flash in front of him. Yeah. And you know how many people ask me after seeing this, who was that? I'm like, that's the Flash. They're like, that was the Flash? I'm right. Like, but Yeah, he's red. And I mean... He's red, his mask resembles Grant Gustin's mask. I mean... The helmet thing was kind of weird. Uh, but this yeah. is like Flash farther in the future. There's lightning around him. Yeah. See, and this is like. All See, the then he wakes up again. Flying. Like, yeah, he wakes up again, but the papers are flying. That's kind of that's what makes me wonder if how much of the second part was a dream. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, it's so if it was at all. To look at it now, it's very odd. Now, there is some difference of cutting, like from an editing point of view. In this in this sequence here, where it cut away to mm-hmm. uh, him seeing, uh, you know, the Bat brand, and then cutting back to Bruce with Lex's information, because they had cut out more of Clark investigating things. Mm-hmm. A lot of that was retooled um, just in the editing room, and it's it's been so long since I've seen the other version, I couldn't explain it more but if you ever have time to watch them both you'll see what i'm talking about and this is where we learned that the white portuguese is a ship yes the first time i believe we've actually talked about the white portuguese when he was discussing it earlier on with just mentions but yeah he's been investigating trying to find out the white portuguese what it was and and it kind of makes me wonder at this point like how much Bruce actually knew because Alfred here is, is not in the know that he doesn't know that it's not a bomb right. that Bruce led him to believe, you know, that at this point, even Bruce is keeping more secrets from Alfred. And that shows you where Bruce is. I mean, Alfred is his most trusted, like one of the best pages is in the opening of Scott Snyder's, um, Batman book. He's talking about who Bruce trusts the most, and it uh, he's like talking about like percentage of everyone in the Bat family, and Alfred mm-hmm. is number one. Alfred, he trusts more yeah. than anyone. Uh, you would think that you would think that Alfred Bruce is Bruce walks the line. You know, what I mean? he walks the line of of darkness and and light, and that Alfred is one of the one people or the top person that would be able, that helps him to stay just on this side of the line. And I do want to say and that he can't do that when he's keeping secrets from him and, and, and plotting, you know, bad things. I love that line of just like the first shedding of how many good guys are left, how many stayed that way. Um, uh, I do have to say that one thing that Batman and Robin, the film, did that I liked was the idea of shifting the story to what happens if Bruce loses Alfred, like exploring that relationship of more of the father, surrogate father, son, and that, you know, Bruce lost his parents. But what happens if he loses Alfred? Um, I did like that. Not the way it was executed, but just the idea, the concept. Now we have yeah. Clark in the police go. station. Um, and I like how the cop kind of points her out when Clark's asking about the guy who was beaten. Yeah, about the guy who was shanked. I mean, I know there was a f- over four hour assembly cut of this movie. Or just a four-hour cut originally. I wonder what else there is that Snyder cut out of this. Because do you remember the picture that was leaked about like Bruce and them like at a gravestone, 
and it said Dick Grayson on it. I've heard of that, yeah. And like, I love this. Okay, where does he go? Where does he go, Jim? And where's Lombard? Thanks. I love that he taps his fingers back to Kansas. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, they're journalists, right? I mean, the people got to go out on assignment. Yeah, I think it's just kind of the the funny idea. I think it would have been funnier and better had it been like cut with some sort of like Superman action where they're like, Superman's doing this downtown. Let's get a reporter on it. And he's like, Kent, Kent, where did he go? You know, oh, kind right. of fun. Um, because you know, and speaking to the Perry White thing there, I mean, at the moment, there are no official plans of a uh, Man of Steel 2 and Lawrence Fishburne saying that he might not be coming back as Perry White. I'm hoping more of that's there are no there are no direct plans for it. So maybe down the line, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, that's straight. Uh, we'll, we'll analyze it when we get to Justice League, but, you know, take note. Lombard's not in this. There's no mention of him. How big the Daily Planet looks, and then what we look we see later in Justice League. Now this Batman yeah. with the rifle right here, straight out of the Dark Knight Returns. Mm-hmm. I got a good friend who's gonna comment on an episode one day with me if I ever can. Uh, he's more of a Marvel guy. He's like my antithesis, you know. Uh, okay. He he loves Marvel and likes DC as I love DC and like Marvel. He's an Android guy. I'm an Apple guy. You know. <laughs> um, I made him read The Dark Knight Returns to before Nicholson he saw this. Terminal. All right, so here we go. Our first look at the Batmobile. Okay, yeah. so that car right there, did it have somebody in it? We don't know because it didn't move. The, the headlights didn't look like it was on. So maybe there's somebody in there. Maybe there's not. All right, so this Batmobile... I really like it's my if I could have a Batmobile, it's the one I would want. But it's my second favorite Batmobile. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the one I want for sure. Um, you know, with our, when when you play uh, Arkham Knight and you finish all of the those guys finish could the be main story, you can drive around Gotham City and Arkham Knight in that Batmobile. And I do all the time. So those guys most likely dead, but may have lived, you know, and you know, the criticism about how Batman kills people in this, it gets to me now. Okay. Batman shooting gun. Okay. Those people, those are dead. I'm going to, those, th those guys are dead. So I'll give you that one. Okay. There's maybe like three dudes in there. They're dead, but let's take a step back. There were guns on the Batmobile in Batman 89. You know, and those guys, the guys he was just, the guys he ran through right there, he, he they were shooting a friggin' uh, uh, high caliber Gatling gun. At know, him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna argue points, man, because people <laughs> give this Batman so much crap for killing people. Watch the Dark Knight films, man. The Tumbler, he hits cars and he goes over cars on the highway. There's some people getting killed Top collateral damage, Lee. Okay. Um. Watch Batman 89. I mean, he blows up Ace that Chemicals guy. with yeah. people in it. Like, we see the bombs fall off the car with people standing yeah. there. The guy who hit the tanker right there had nothing to do with Batman except the guy wasn't watching where he was driving. Yes. You know? Um, this guy right here, he died. He yep, got hit. <laughs> that, that dude is dead. But um, Batman couldn't see him coming out of a building. I think it goes back to Batman is a little bit more reckless. Anatoly's yeah. alive, uh, barely. Like, he's way too um, alive. But it, Batman returns. There's a scene where Batman takes the bomb that the clown has and puts on someone and pos puts him down a hole and he blows up. Yeah. Batman has killed another version of the character. I think the only movie that we can argue maybe he didn't kill anybody, Batman 66 and Batman and Robin. Paper. Yeah. Um, the uh, there's the shot. Superman okay. standing there. Batman's I love face. how he hits him here, and it's just it's nothing. Like the Batmobile 
driving through buildings and blowing stuff up and, you know, <laughs> crashing cars like they're matchbox cars. And then he hits, then the Batmobile hits Batman and it's like, it's done for. I love, I love this. Like it's damaged. Superman rips the top off. I'd be pissed if I was Batman. Like, dude, that's my car. <laughs> you have any idea how much this thing costs? <laughs> See, and, and Superman's perspective of Batman is is off. Here we go, the line. And, Do you bleed? And and why why would people I guess we're just, you know, we're Superman fans and we know Superman from multiple mediums. Uh whereas a lot of people only know Chris Reeve, you know, and, yep. and a couple and a couple of maybe television versions or whatnot. But Superman is, he's like all about the ultimatums. You know what I mean? Like yep. the bat is dead. That This is your last time. Don't, don't go, don't go when they shine your light. Like that's it. Now, just, why would people think that is out of character for him? Like that's no, Richard from Citron. his perspective. Yeah. And then there's Ben Affleck. I love this scene of this. This is one of my favorite scenes of the whole movie. And I love how he talked about the switch right there and how it's hidden in the camera. And I love, I just love the, the realness of him getting out of the car. Yeah. But jumping back to what you were saying, yes, about Superman's ultimatums. And I love how this film, like <laughs> the Batmobile, is if the 89 Batman and the Tumblr had a child. And that's like yeah. smart marketing. They took the two most famous like Batmobiles and paired them together. I mean, I even like that shot of Affleck as Batman looking to see where the kryptonite went. Like I love, like he's got a five o'clock shadow and he's got the gray in his hair. Like it just shows he's a little bit beat down, worn down, you know? He's yeah. he's taking it, um, and then Lex has the the green glowing rock, and then there's Lois with Swanwick. Yeah, I mean the majority of people in that the majority of everything that happened in in that uh, uh, in that chase scene. You know, that was a lot of that was like collateral damage and putting people down. Like he's the, the, the thing is you, you have to put somebody down the first time. You can't put them down and turn your back and then be there again. Yeah. When it comes to being Batman and Robin. I mean, if we want to even reference the Titans trailer, you can't put somebody down. And, and have them be able to pop back up behind you. You know what I mean? If you're going to drop them, they need to be down for the count. And, you know, I think it goes back to watching the different Batman films. I mean, even like I said, watching the Dark Knight films, he drives the tumbler recklessly and causes problems. Oh, absolutely. Tons of property damage. And, and I mean, he runs over cop cars with cops in the car. Yes. But, but those films, like, he don't and, kill nobody. Yeah. Well, let's see. The first one that he runs over, sure, the two cops are alive inside and they are smashed down underneath the hood of the car, but they're alive inside. The set, the second car that he flips the, the car onto, at the beginning of the chase crashes on top of the car and the people are crushed down inside. They could very well still be alive, but they can't go anywhere. They're trapped inside that car. They can't move it. They can't get out. Yep. You know what I mean? They're not, they don't have to be dead, but no, this Batman kills. He is, you know, he isn't Batman cause he kills like, no, he's there is, there is collateral damage because he is fighting a war. And real quick, since we're moving on, I love the scene where Clark is actually talking with his mom and she gives the be their hero or not be. That goes back mm -hmm. to the idea and the thought that in Man of Steel, it kind of was not his choice to reveal himself. 
Like he was called out, so he had to. It wasn't his choice to come out. Yeah. And, and then that, we've got the lady telling the senator she wasn't telling the truth. She, she's 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 deciding to turn and tell her what's going on because she knows that she is a, a loose end. I cannot remember how much of that of her was in the theatrical cut because I know that it was her story was expanded upon in this. I don't remember if maybe that even any of her, like, I lied, didn't tell the truth was in. Yeah. The I can't remember cut. specifically of everything. I know the bus scene was not in the theatrical cut. The bus scene and, and then her soon to be death scene. Uh, yes, they were not, not in the theatrical cut. Okay. So real quick, we didn't say this earlier. People said Superman killed this guy right here. You yeah. know, I like I like the head cannon that he grabbed him and then Superman used his other hand or his arm to break the wall and just kind of use like scared him, intimidated him. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that when he grabbed him, he he uh, uh, rotated or something and he went through the wall. He didn't put the guy through the wall. If he had right. put the guy through the wall, he'd have like exploded into a messy fit on that first wall. So. I, I'm not a fan of putting real people in fake movies. Like, cause to me, that takes me out of the realism they're trying to build. You know, John Stewart, Soledad O'Brien, um, what's his face? Um, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. So. Well, it's kind of the same bit they used. Um, it's, it's kind of a similar thing they used with Man of Steel having real life um uh locations, real life places, you know, like it's a saturated world. It's a real world and there are other people living in it and you don't have to you don't have to spend any real time on them, but quick clips, quick quick glimpses, like there's a real there's a real world going on around. See, I, I like that, but then it, it makes me feel like okay, this is now supposed to be my world. Uh, but they're not here. But Solid Ad's here, and uh, John Stewart's here, and Neil deGrasse's here, but Superman's not here. You know what I'm saying? But moving on. Right. So we have kind of the Lex Luthor with the Senator standoff discussion. And then here's where we find out that, you know, Wallace is doing this without Bruce and knowing. I've always tried to look to see how much money he gets, but I feel like the writing and everything's done purposely. So we don't see how much that they're being paid. Uh, it looks like a th thousands of dollars in the, you know, the victims fund. I like how, you know, Br Bruce, we see him right here. He's in his company, you know, he's working in his company. Uh, and I like that we get that angle. Bruce Wayne, um, man of the town. I don't know how to wrestle a pig. So there's another line that was recut in the trailer to make it seem like what he said was something different. I hate that with trailer editing. So here we have a scene that was definitely in the extended cut, and it is... The, the testimonial lady at the subway. And we have Anatoly, the AKA KJ beast behind her and he pushes her. So she gets hit by a train. Literally hit by a train. And then we have Lois on a DC and there's the shot from the Comic Con trailer that I first saw while in the hospital. Uh, it was, I was in the hospital and it was a good day of seeing this trailer. I like that this takes place in the fall. Like we see the fall leaves and then Superman climbing Capitol stairs. And I love this shot of him just walking and the people noticing him as he just walks in and Bruce, you know, still watching and checking the, you know, the checks. And then here comes Superman walking in. 
with his suit, looking BA. <laughs> looking huge. Like Henry Cavill how how much bigger did he how much bigger did they say he was? I thirty pounds bigger than he was in Man of Steel. Well, it's kind of like that thing, like you're in the routine, kind of like a Hugh Jackman when he did The Wolverine, and then he just kept working out because they started to film uh, X Men: Days of Future Past right after it. Mm-hmm. So he looked even bigger then because he just kept the same routine going. Um, right. Well, yeah, it's like uh, Tom Welling in Smallville as well. You know, I mean, he he worked out and he trained for for ten years, and just just the consistent ten years worth of training. He was 20, 30 pounds heavier than when he started because he's a grown man. He's been training for 10 years. I wish I had that. See, I love this line. Today's a day for truth because she knows now. She realizes Luther's done stuff and then there's the granny's peach tea of piss. Which, right. And she you wonder a what job of being scared. And yeah, you wonder um, like what what kind of whistle she was going to blow at this point from finding out what happened. I like his face. He's like there. I kind of wish Superman would have got to say something like mercy looks. And like, I would like to see like more fear on her face. Like I feel bad for mercy, you know, Lex's yeah. assistant for people who don't know mercy grace, his assistant and this who like kind of looks like if you watch, she has like a crush on him. She's in there and Lex isn't in there. And then Superman, she looks at him with eyes that are scared. She sees Lex is not there. She does such a great job of conveying fear. Then he looks. And then, boom, the bomb goes off and takes out. I mean, I was in the theater and literally my jaw dropped. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, And then the the look of pain on Henry Cavill's face here in just a moment of standing in that room. Everybody dead. Like, what could I have done? Why, you know, all these people are dead because I'm here. Yes. And, you know, and it's like that weight on him. Like, they all just died to frame him. And then there's Bruce. He doesn't know what's going on. He just all of a sudden he sees Superman somewhere. And then he has the... uh, Your family die. And it's just, it's fueling his rage. Oh yeah. Ben just, I mean, Ben does this subtle, this subtle movement there. He looks so mad, but just that subtle. Now here's an additional scene. That rage is fueling up inside of him. This is an additional scene. And I like this scene where, you know, you have the first responders bring people and there's Superman bringing people out too. And this, this paramedic scene right here. This, his line, his acting and his line right here, um, like speaks volumes for, for the whole film right there. And, and for Superman, like he's thanking him. He's, you know, he's helping people, but like, I need some room. You know, thank you for helping, but you know, like back up, please. I mean, this is just devastating. And. You know, Clark is like right there. He's just, he sees Lois. He's just overwhelmed. Like he's hurting. Um, I like uh, some of the things, the way it's cut, I would like to actually see him do a little bit more kind of like the moment before the moment after, um, you know, he flew away right there. Alfred chopping wood right here. That's added. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I needed, this could have I needed been this scene. I don't know about you, but I needed Alfred chopping wood. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, I needed to see him actually doing something for a change besides, you know, making drinks and on the computer and working on the Batmobile and, you know, keeping up with Bruce. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not, he hasn't done yeah. enough in this movie yet, but chopping wood just solidified it for me. Right. Like, we could have no more Alfred after that. No. Um, I think the scene with him chopping wood, I mean, the scene of him chopping wood was, was a few, it was a few seconds they didn't need. Um, but I do like the addition of him coming in and seeing what Bruce was watching on the television, what Bruce was looking at, the, 
the checks with the writing on them, the explosion, he's like, he knows right now that it's bad for some people. Yes. Because that, because he is so mad right now. Lex and then we see why it was so bad for people. Douchebag. Riding a motorcycle in the rain. <laughs> God, I can't wait to get my motorcycle. Lucky you. I'll probably never get one because I have other responsibilities. Forever. Yeah. I love this <laughs> right here. Like this shot of Batman swooping down. That should have been in the theatrical. Why would you cut that? Like, yeah, that was a fractal, like two seconds, maybe like I could have done without Lois in the bathtub, like the build up to that and could have got that Batman scene. And there's another line in here to me. That was an epic line that pissed me off, but they cut it. Sorry, I'm getting a little heated, but, <laughs> but yeah, that, there, that Batman, there are in two lines in this film that make me mad that were cut. They're both coming up soon. And Lex is happy. It's like a bent happiness. He's like, my plan is working. Mm -hmm. I love that. She calls him and he's on her balcony. Not even in her room, just on her balcony. See, I love that. I didn't see it. See, he says, I'm afraid I didn't see because I wasn't looking. But we had that setup that he that he's always on guard, you know? Yeah. That setup earlier where he was listening, he heard, and then out of the ordinary. Yeah. The um and I and I know I had speculated on on why he didn't see it or anything. Um, from uh, uh, when the movie came out from the theatrical version. Um, he didn't see it, you know, because it was lined in lead. Uh, we find out that's true. Yep. And then... Um, that's the other uh, That's the other line that... That's the first line that makes me mad it was cut, was he didn't see it because it, Luther had it lined in lead specifically so that Clark could see it. But we don't... Yeah. We don't know how Luther knew that he couldn't see lead, but you know what? We as fans know he can't see through lead. We just got this. Well, with his, with with his intelligence, and I mean Bruce, when he's refining the kryptonite, he's using lead to, um, encase the kryptonite in the grenades in the gas grenades. Yep. So, um, I mean, I'm sure with with a little bit of research, um, they. You know, it would have been pretty easy to figure to figure something out, you know, with whatever line you wanted to go with that they could that they figured it out. Um, uh, Like Superman, like Chris Reeves. I mean, I can't see through lead like you're going to tell a reporter a weakness that you can't see through lead. Yeah, it was an innocent time. Yes. And announce it to the world. Um, But uh, there's the command key. As Lether, Lex is now in the Kryptonian ship in the what's left of the Genesis chamber, which mm-hmm. plays a huge role in this film. The you know the the original Scout ship. But I wanted to point out, you know, another thing is Clark in this arc. Clark didn't choose to come out as Superman. It was kind of forced upon him. The ideals, in a sense, of Superman where his father and him doing what he thinks he should do. You know, mm-hmm. He tells Lois, Superman was never real, blah, blah, blah. And that's important for the arc of the character that we're going to get. And I'm going to bring that back up um, when we get to Justice League. Yeah, yeah, that that is an important arc. I mean, it is, it is literally the development of Superman, you know. And he wasn't Superman before he put on the suit. And, you know. I love the beating of the tire. And the yeah. little workout, you know, of the training montage here. Yeah. Of Bruce getting in, you know, peak physical shape to, you know, I love how he's using this high powered super laser to have to cut the kryptonite rock. Yeah. That, that nothing beyond that could have, could have done just affected a rock like that. Not, not let alone, uh, you know, uh, an alien metal alloy. 
I like how we see all the bruises on his body. Now, take a moment to think about the spear in itself. Like, you know, using a knife to kill somebody is very personal. And if Bruce is choosing to make a spear to kill him with kryptonite, that's more personal. We know that he doesn't have a, a problem with using projectile weapons. You know, he doesn't make like a uh, kryptonite batarang. All right, so here he is. He clicks on the metahuman icon. Now, I do think it's a little weird that they each have their own sy symbols. Um, Wonder Woman's makes sense because she already wears it, so somebody could see her with it, you know, mm -hmm. and use that as her logo, kind of like for a file. Um, right. Flashes the make sense. The Aquaman the lightning you know, bolt. <laughs> makes sense. But Cyborgs doesn't. Uh, I kind of, in a way, could have done without this scene. Just, I don't mind him seeing, like, the security footage of her. But I would have been okay with, like, clipping little things. Like this, the metahumans, the, the, the Belgian, you know, 1918, like. Cause I'm just more, I would have preferred the, like, reveal to be hidden. You know, like in surprise, Wonder Woman was being filmed at the time of this is released. So we, that is a, you know, an awesome picture, like from that film in this movie. Yeah, yeah I, I like when they talk about actually filming the two, um, taking the picture during the time when it was um, when it was being set up that thing. And then when they actually went to film it, they had to, um, you know, they, they had to get the same, the same location, the same, uh, everything, you know, same stance, same proportions, right? I wish they would have explained the whole mixing of the blood thing. Um, you know, with Luther's blood, like what the symbolism and stuff that was there, foreign genetic material like, like um just you know a little bit more explanation of why yeah well you know i mean when you think of genetically modified um what have you genetically modified organisms i mean they're not they're not particularly um ideal yeah like I said, I just wish I had a little bit more explanation, but it, it works enough for me. Yeah. It's super science. If it had been something where like using his genetics made it invulnerable to kryptonite or something, because it was part human now. I like that. Like Perry's still no Kent. Like, do people know that Lois and Clark have a thing going or? Yeah, I'm not sure. See, that's, that's just messed up. Superman was involved in the planning of the attack. Yeah. I mean, that's that's media for you. You know what I mean? Like jumping to the farthest extreme conclusion. Kids watching it like, you know, the, the mom right there just shaking her head like, no. I, you know, it would have been a really cool scene right there. If they would have cut to like guys working on an oil rig and it was a couple of the guys that he had saved at the beginning of Man of Steel. You just kind of put it together that that was Superman that saved him before, you know, the costume or whatever. Right. So we have the scene of him hiking. And they're basically saying he's going to go up there and die. Um, he comes to die. Like, it would have been kind of neat if he had just been hiking, like, up there and just had, like, a shirt on. Like, a t-shirt. Like, no jacket. <laughs> and they were just like, what the heck? Right. See, here we go. Here, the Lois is seeing, you know, where they're, uh, they're at Wallace's apartment, the homegrown, uh, you know, terrorist. Mm -hmm. I like that scene of Lex looking out over the bay at Gotham City off the top of Lex Corp Tower. Like he's, he's satisfied, you know, he knows his plan is, his plan's working. And then they did a good job here of freaking making his 
apartment look like some kind of psycho Unabomber apartment. Yeah. Um, you know, like we, cause we got those shots, you know, of his, uh, apartment earlier. We saw how he was, he had the newspaper clippings. Um, but this was like an exaggerate. And I like how the cop knows her, the cop let her in. Um, and this is something that, you know, fresh fruit, like, yeah. I mean, it's kind of a leap, but, you know, I mean, it's kind of a leap, but you would expect that somebody who's ready to go die isn't bringing fresh groceries home. And right here we go. Right here. Um, and you know, we were talking about the bomb and stuff. We kind of got away from that just a, a little bit. One last thing I wanted to say on the fact is like, why people are like, why would, why wouldn't he hear it ticking? You know, it's like, it's not a bomb from the 1940s that <laughs> runs on a ticking clock. Like bombs in the 2000 are, are radio controlled. You hit a button and the whole thing explodes. Like <laughs> there is no, there is no ticking alarm clock with the little bells on top going tick, 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 and, counting down. <laughs> and like, you know, that scene where they, he, he augmented the bomb so it didn't blow as big. He, you know, lined it with lead. The wheelchair was lead. And then Lois says he couldn't have seen it. I do like this scene. You know, it's kind of odd. But it's a very, you know, Snyder scene of like the dream sequence type thing of, uh, Clark standing here talking to his dad. Very true to the comics of Superman. Clark oh. wanting to talk to his father. I was going to say, yeah, that's nothing out of the ordinary of, of Superman Clark talking to, to a dead relative, which seems to be either a, a dream sequence or, or some kind of supernatural element. It's an interesting concept, the story he talks about how they're protecting their farm and they end up destroying the Lang farm, you know, by, yeah. diver by diverting the water from them, diverting the problem from one, there's fallout, you know? Yeah, that even Superman's actions, no matter how good or noble, there's, there is going to be some fallout. And you have to learn to live, you know, you have to learn to live with that, to, to deal with that. And I, it's very interesting that it sets up like right here about, you know, when I met your mother, she gave me faith that there's good in the world. And that's how Clark views Lois. And, you know, later, I love that. He's like, I miss you too, dad. Yeah. And I, I like but the see, fact even that even there, even there though, you know, coming from coming off of Man of Steel and the misconceptions of Kevin Costner's character, like, like he still, he still is using his dad's, his dad's teaching, his, you know, his, his dad's words to, um, help him. You know, they're still making him a good person. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, it's one of those that, it's a little bit of a different ideology, not a whole lot, but um, we just didn't get enough time with him, you know? Um, now, this is where Alfred is talking with Bruce, and Bruce says, you know, he's older now than his father ever was, because it's a little bit of the history of the Wayne family, um, you know, that they were hunters first generation of Wayne's and you know I, I like I said I like that there's a lot of backstory to this Batman that we don't get answered and I I hate that it's very unlikely that we'll get a lot of stuff fleshed out now um, you know what happened to Wayne Manor which Robin died um, you know. well I'm hoping I'm hoping the Robin thing we still get a payoff on that is a that is a strong story um, uh, these days um, you know, that is a very popular Batman story. Um, 
like the best animated Batman movie ever made yes. involves that um, under the red hood. Uh, if you haven't seen it, absolutely go see it. Um, I said it's, it is to me, I think it's the best animated one um, for Batman. It's, it's, yes. For Batman. Yes. It is extremely, uh, it is followed extremely close by mask of the phantasm. And there's a lot of, nostalgia when it comes to that but when it comes to structure and story and action and emotional beats i will uh, yeah. under the red hood is is by far the number one um, that, bad that feature the final shot in under the red hood is, yeah i i tear up every time yep me too every single time it gets me <laughs> um um so we have here the first reveal of the armored bat suit it's cool, but I'm not that big a fan of it. You know, like, I'm just going to say, like, I'm not even a big fan of the Dark Knight Returns. Like, so I can understand why people don't like it. But See, I was wondering if it was going to be like hydraulic power, like, like the Batman Returns one. You know what I mean? Where it augmented his strength and things like that. So he, like, I think I'm, it's supposed to. I love the bat signal. Like, we got our new bat signal. I love that it's. <laughs> My favorite means like you know things are bad when Batman has to call Batman for backup. <laughs> you know, right. I like how we have the white eyes because of the glow of the helmet of the uh scene. Yeah. Um the uh the the armored suit, I think, you know, for this one it seems it seems so much more like um, it's, it's there to protect him yeah, and to also be, you know, some harder than his fists to be able to hit him with, you know? So it's there to protect him. And it's also there to be used as a weapon against him as he weakens him and tries to bring him down to, to a man's level to fight him. And there's Anatoly mopping the floor. Yep. The dude blends in pretty well for someone that definitely looks like they have a, a look to stand out. Yeah, with his tattoos and his scars. Now, considering his future in this movie, which I won't go into, but uh, until we get there, but um, the there is a story that um, I have heard about that in the past that Batman basically. He was getting it handed to him by KG Beast, and, and with luck, he he locked him in a room underground and basically buried him alive and left him to die. Nice. Yeah, that's what and that's what Batman did to to KG Beast. Like KG Beast was giving it to him, like he was he was beating him, and yeah, with luck, and he trapped him in an underground room in a in a sewer or something and left him there to die. So here we go with Lex and Lois. You know what? The you can you can think any actor, actor, actress, you know what I mean? People it's all it's all your own tastes, you know, it's all your own opinions. But um I've I've liked Jesse Eisenberg in in most of the stuff I've seen him in. Agreed. Um, and uh, he he plays things uh, he plays things a different way. You know what I mean? He plays something that other people wouldn't do. He really he's really unique, and uh, I think he brings that uniqueness to this Lex Luthor. And especially like if they if they are hitting it, it's Lex Luthor Jr. It opens up a little bit more of his character's portrayal. Um, because I mean, think about it. In the Death of Superman comics, it's Lex Luthor Jr. and he has the long hair. Mm -hmm. I love how he pushes her off. Yeah. And there he is, just underneath her catches her. Yeah. And then this part coming up here where he tells Lex Luthor, he's like, I'll, I'll take you in without breaking you. You know, um, we we have the recent interviews of Cavill talking about the decision to his decision to to kill General Zod um, at the end of Man of Steel. You know, doing what he 
felt he needed to do. But after that, you know, no matter what, even in an impossible situation, you know, he wants to find a possible outcome. Yes. And And at this point, I mean, he threw her off the roof. I mean, I know I'd be ready to throw him off. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) I... I love this camera work of how it's just slowly as he descends down to the platform. Mm -hmm. See, I love this Clark Joseph kit. See, I love how this whole speech of Luther and like the atheist approach of like Luther and his God is tribal. And like, you know, he said, Jehovah, Horus, Sounds like I'm like a half second ahead of you. Yeah, that's cool. It works. We talk enough. I've seen it enough. (laughs) Right. You know, he said, what have you done? See right there, Flex just admitted that it was his, like, he's been working on Batman as well. Like, pushing him, feeding him. You know, getting him to the edge where he's going to blow up. God versus me. Day versus night. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, I do. Fight, fight. I'm not talking about Lois. Oh, dude, this would piss me off right here. His mother. Oh, yeah. I mean, we already saw how angry he got with Zod. Like, you don't attack my mother. Then showing him those photos. Yeah. Um, like, you just her see tied like, up, witch painted across her forehead. Yeah. All just like you saw it in his face, like he's holding back. Oh yeah, the 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 red in his eyes. It's that just saw that meme the other day. This is when Superman looks at you like this. You know you've done messed up. Where is she? <laughs> I love that that little and raw like all the god hints of like the mythology that he's mm-hmm. like hitting him with. And we we just, you know, also state that the hair in this is more Superman than it was in Man of Steel. Like just the little mm-hmm. touches. The for no explanation of the new suit, but we have a new suit that's, you know, got more gold in it. It's got, yeah, it's the, got a uh it's got a Kryptonian message across the middle of the S. Yep. Little little different things here. The cuffs are different. Um, brighter red to the cape, uh, blue in this, like, brighter blue. So, I mean, it, you know, enhances more of the Superman. Even the boots have the extra, like, I don't know what you, like, line, double dip, or what, like, right? Like classic. To the cup. Yeah, you know, and talking about the suit and stuff and the color, like, Man of Steel was was really muted, you know. I mean, we know this. There's more color than people make it sound like. They make it sound like it's a black and white film, but it's not. <laughs> um, but uh, the blue and the red and the yellow, you know, it all stands out so much more in this in this movie. Um, you know, it's it's more real world tones looks more natural it's not so bright it doesn't it's not like overly bright right and then i'd say that's unusual activity the lightning and electricity striking out from the ship and then 
you know, then we have, I'm going to refer to her as mysterious woman, you know, lightning at the unusual activity. Just take note of just all the extras and people and things going around that just make it feel like a filled out world. Now, this also, like you were just talking about, like, you know, he doesn't want to fight and kill, but I have to convince him to help me. Or no one, you know, or I'm going to have to kill him. No one stays good in this world. Um, you know, he's, he's hurting. His mom's in danger. He doesn't know, you know. Now, there was the scene here that was cut out that has never been really confirmed if it was filmed or just storyboarded where he opens up his hearing to search for his mom and he hears all the people crying out for help and he's just so overwhelmed of all the tragedy of everything. He, he doesn't know what to do. Mm. They said it was kind of a dark scene just because boys share too. Yeah. He's trying to ignore, uh, trying to ignore all the cries for help because he's looking for one person. It is you. So, I mean, she's probably just looking at a green screen right here. Who are you? Where have you been? And then the metahuman. And then the metahuman file, yeah. It looked like it said the date was third, like, I can't tell. I mean, it's not a date. I was trying to see here. As she's as she's clicking on them. We have the music that was going to be like the pseudo Justice League one 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 intro. So we have Barry Allen, which I swear it looks like Ezra Miller was just pulled off the street to film his Barry Allen stuff, like all in one day. Like the hair looks horrible. Like he's got like a like dirty mustache, beard looking thing. Right. Cause well, you this, wonder if how long at that point, like he had been the flash, you know what I mean? Okay. Like, so right here, we're getting our first look at Aquaman. This mm-hmm. is what kills me. He's got his trident. He has some sort of Alanian pants and garb on. Okay. You know, he, he doesn't do yeah. much in this movie, but he's got some Alanian stuff and he, you know, he fly. He swims away quickly. Hold that thought. Now we're looking at Cyborg. Property of Star Labs. Uh, we see just the upper torso of Victor. <laughs> There's a Dr. Pepper. Yep, man. You, a... uh, you took it before I could say it. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. That, sorry, that's the first time I've seen it. <laughs> Still there. All right. Dr. Pepper has a can of Dr. Pepper in front of him. See, now he has the mother box. See, now so, I'm thinking that object 61982 was labeled after the date it was found. But it was found after World War One, Because they talk about that. that oh, okay. Remember they Wonder do. Woman, the okay. post scene. So there's Victor being formed. Now, that completely, you know contradicts more of what happens in uh, Justice League, but we'll talk more about that when we get to Justice League. What I was going to say about Aquaman is, okay, I like that, you know, Lois tells Perry it's not for a story. So he knows that it's something more. So I said, Perry has a soft spot for Lois. But well, the thing with Aquaman, I keep trying to get back, is he already has his trident and a look. And with all the marketing for this film, like, they had Aquaman toys and stuff. I thought he was going to do something in this movie. Right. But he didn't do anything more than Flash and Cyborg did. Yeah. I mean, they had yeah, a Halloween well, come costume. To find out. You know? Uh, uh, right. Well, come to find out as, as, you know, we're recording this now. It's after um, San Diego Comic-Con, so... We've seen a trailer, we've heard more news, things like that. Um, apparently in, in Aquaman, they're going to be searching for the original King's Trident for, uh, uh, from Atlantis. Um, so 
the Quindent that he's carrying is probably more of a um, uh, ceremonial weapon of, of some sorts. Yes. Uh, it, it also is interesting because in Justice League, yeah. you know, she well, has the yeah. he has the line to Mara, I need something from you. And the next scene, next time we see him is him with that and Alanian armor. I didn't mean to cut you yeah. off. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's all right. Um, well, we know that Volko will have, you know, worked with him before he even, under, you know, knows who or what he is or anything, you know. And so just the fact that, like, he's probably trained and has it. Um, yeah, we still don't know if maybe the armor was what he needed from Mira. But, yeah, that's kind of big. So it just kind of like, I feel like, why did he have, like, I want, like, why did he have this Alanian stuff? And then he doesn't have it. So it's just kind of interesting. So we are at the battle. We got on our Aquaman tangent, but, you know, originally Clark tries to talk to Bruce. He's like, Bruce. And then Bruce, you know, shoots at him. Clark pushes him. You know, stay down. If I Yeah, I, I do. I like the beginning where he's kind of testing him the the sound waves he uses like the Dark Knight Returns the little little gauntlet the gun type thing the, yeah you know I mean he, everybody has to run Superman through the gauntlet Lex Luthor Batman <laughs> right here his first exposure to kryptonite not even knowing of its existence probably the the first time he's ever really hurt or felt pain other than that time aboard the ship. Yeah. Yeah, he's never been weak besides Black Zero, the ship and the and the world engine. So I kind of I kind of feel like I can see where Superman should have talked a little faster to Bruce like Bruce, I need your help. And then like kept talking and stopped the whole then he boom, goes to punch him and Batman blocks it. Men are brave. You know, <laughs> and then here we go we have the fight. Let right. Which Superman doesn't know how to fight. Like, you know, he's never had to fight. And when he did, he was just, he was power swinging. He was all, all out brawling. Yes. There's a comic where Wonder Woman tries to teach Clark how to actually, the art of fighting, of what you're doing, you know, because he's never really had to. And he's in pain right here. It's like being sick. Oh, my God. That had to have hurt. And like, he's getting beat up. Man, and, yeah. Imagine yourself with the flu, like a crippling flu, and then just getting pounded on, getting jumped, your chest jumped on. I mean, and then right here, it looks like he's starting to feel just a, just somewhat better. Catches the leg. <laughs> you know, right here, we have a little bit of a curl. I love it. You know, I love the little bit of the curl that we get. And then, you know, mm -hmm. them running to each other is a little bit that was extra in the teaser trailer when I saw it in theaters. Yeah. I love this. He's mm -hmm. punching and it's starting to wear off. And you start to hear the like <laughs> clink. <laughs> metal to metal. <laughs> and then he just gives him that look and Batman's like, okay, hold on. He rises up and boom, takes him down. Yeah. He's like, all right, wait up. Hold on, bro. Hold on. <laughs> See, I think he should have been like right here. He should have been like, Bruce. All right. Stay down. I need your help. I need to talk to you. Like, yeah. I love this shot though of like him standing up. I just, that's my only beef is like, I love this with him, like just the whole super embracing water. himself. What is he should have just started talking again. Like, look, he's down. Like, you know, gets hit with kryptonite again, gas. Like, he's got to know, like, he's got more than one shot. Like, come on, seriously. Like, I mean, you would assume he would know. But honestly, are you thinking right when you're when you know that your mother's about to be burned alive? That's also true. Like. You know, he's, he's mentally compromised, emotionally compromised. Um, people don't, and I love the, uh, credit. Like I, 
he's also just scared because he just learned there's something that's making him weak and can hurt him. Yeah. And Bruce has I, it. I, and I, Yeah. And he's, he's extremely violent. He already knows he's extremely violent and brutal. I love the, um, the special features when they show him, hit him with the big foam block. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Bruce just picked him up like nothing right here. Like, yeah. in the most awkward, weird way, too. Like, back bent. Not like how yeah. you normally think you would get somebody. And then chucks him downstairs. And he lands on a pile of radiators. Like, it's not even just crashing to the ground. It is like awkward shaped metal like ribs of metal and he just crashes on after he falls how many like a dozen floors i do think it's interesting that he land that batman lands next to him instead of being like just laying on top of him like he did earlier right hey look that's a real cape being dragged yep I was going to say that, man. We're on the same page here. <laughs> you know, it's a. Hey, that's good. That's good. You know, it's a real cape. You know, when they're in the gutter, no reason. All. Like it lets you in on the psychology of Batman. You know, like Bruce is not a like nice person. Bruce is a broken person. It's the people yeah. that he surrounds himself with that helps make him a better person. If it wasn't for Alfred, if it wasn't even for Dick later on, you know, it wouldn't have helped him. Hey, you notice how he's got a metal cowl on that's cracked and there's no black eye makeup? Mm hmm. All right, so we're getting to the Martha scene, okay? I'm just going to say that the execution, I think, was a little off, but I understand where they were going with it. You know, I think it could have been a little bit better of a scene. Um, you know, the whole point was Bruce is now in that moment. He humanized Superman. He, he connected to his father's last word that now Bruce is the one who's murdering people. Yeah. You know, um, and now he's like the person that killed his parents. Yeah. They, I mean, they build it up through the entire movie. How many times do they flash back, uh, to Martha? He, he's always focused on his mother. Um, that's his father's last words that they, that they, uh, focus on multiple times throughout the film. And um, he doesn't, like, and he, he doesn't know that Superman's name, his mom's yeah. name. He doesn't even know Superman's history. Yeah. And we know that Clark knows he's Bruce. When he first comes to him, he says, Bruce, I need yeah. your help. Yeah. So the, I mean, the only thing, and you know, they could have replaced, Alfred chopping wood with it was he knows it's Bruce. He knows Bruce's mother's name is Martha. It is public knowledge that Bruce Wayne's parents, Martha and Thomas Wayne were killed in front of him. Yep. Like alone, that could be the one thing logically that Superman would know would could trigger something in in him you know he knows that he's a, a broken man because what he's what he does as batman you know so he could know the fact that just speaking the name martha not saying lex is trying to kill my mom yeah but saying the name martha would cause a misstep in what he's doing but they could have at least showed something like and this, everybody knows this, that, um, you know, he knows he's Bruce and, and that his parents, that name, but, you know, they could have at least showed for the general audience, like him seeing like Martha and Thomas Wayne, uh, yeah. Mer you know, son, sole survivor witness, you know what I mean? Some quick article from when he was from like researching when he was the Bruce. child. And yeah. It's kind of like, have you ever had emotions or like, you yelled, you scream, or you argued. Then, as soon as you did that, you felt better. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what he experienced. Like he just let it all out, and now he knows he's wrong. Like he feels like he's like, dang it, what have I done? Yeah. So yeah, the execution may have been slightly weak, but they they literally built that through the entire movie. Uh, every other time you saw Bruce and Batman. Like, 
they literally built it up for the entire movie. So the fact that he just uses the name, people are like, oh, that's so weak. You know, that's their best friends now because their mother has the same name. Well, no, that's just pathetic and looking at the surface and nothing right. else. I love this. No, it, it was built up through the entire film. I love this, that he says, I promise you Martha will not die tonight. You know, they just got done fighting. Clark knows what's going like he's trusting Bruce like he's trusting him with going to save his mom while he goes and takes care of something else that needs his attention. That's a big deal. <laughs> you know, and then yeah. right here we have Batman in the regular bat suit and the bat wing. I don't deserve you, Alfred. I love it. No, sir, you do not. <laughs> I think another thing was they they did a lot. If you watched all the trailers carefully, they revealed way too much of the fat the fight between Batman and Superman in the trailers. Mm -hmm. There wasn't that much left to show us in the actual movie. You know, because I I watched the trailers for these like religiously, like almost. Oh, me daily. too. Here we here we go. The beginning oh, of the Martha rescue scene. The best fight scene for Batman ever put to film. Yes. Okay, so here we go. People, once again, we have one, two, three guys. Batman shoots a missile gun or shoots a gun back. And for all we know, he could be shooting rubber bullets. That's, you know, been established in the comics, but he blew up those cars. Yeah. Okay. Well, those guys had some heavy artillery. Those are high caliber weapons that they're using. Like, that's like wartime weapons. He doesn't want that on the streets in Gotham. Yep. <laughs> I, I love this. Drone mode, Alfred controlling. Later. In a little bit. I love that. Okay. Gonna drop him off on the second floor. You know, most people think the fourth, but nope, not Batman. And this shot of him crashing down. Yeah, coming through the window. That's awesome. Like, this is the most Batman Batman's ever been. I feel like I kind of wish Snyder would have gotten his chance. Like, he did a good job with Superman, but I feel like... He he's better if he could do Batman. Like that's awesome. Like the magnet for the guns. Yeah, the gr the magnet for the little grenades on the guns. Yeah, and then I love that though. I mean, the floor explodes. Everybody looks away, and he goes right through the floor to the ceiling, and they're all looking down, and he's above them. I mean, this is just brutal. This scene is abs yeah. This scene is absolutely brutal, and that's what I said. You, you, when you're fighting two dozen guys wh who are all armed to the teeth, you know, you're not caring if something happens to them. Like that dude like, right there, he grabbed the grenade himself and died. Okay. Yeah, People like you're you're putting them down. You don't want that guy to get back up behind you. Like, they're going down. They're going down for the count. Okay. <laughs> that dude's dead. Yeah. Okay. That was added blood on the wall. Yeah, he just, like, shattered that dude's skull. Like, yeah, he's dead. But, like I said, he just threw a box at him. He can't control where the box hits. Okay, he broke a dude's arm. Straight up, that's going to happen. Okay. Batman breaks on bones. That punch, like... <laughs> Putting dude's head into the floor. I love he gets shot directly out. Did you hear the oh? We yeah, haven't talked about it. Too. I love the modulated voice. Yeah, I, I've talked about it before. I loved it, but it allows the actor to give a better line delivery, and then just got stabbed in the right there, right in the separation of the armor. I love that it, it'll then he stabs the dude in the in the shoulder. It allows the actor to give a great line delivery and then, um, you know, just make it dark and deep in post. Yeah. 
And that's, you know, that way it works. And, and that scene there where he's just looking at the dude, like, you don't want to be, you don't want to be the guy who Batman is alone with after you just put a knife in his shoulder and he just dropped 23 other guys. Then bust <laughs> through the wall right here. This is straight out of the Dark Knight Returns right here. The mm -hmm. gun, the flamethrower. Yeah, even even his line, I believe you. I'll kill her. <laughs> this is his most lines in one scene right here. Mm-hmm. I believe you. <laughs> See, he doesn't kill him, but he doesn't have to save him either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But I do love this line. I'm a friend of your sons. Yeah. The cape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Um, just a nice bit of levity after he just just took out an entire facility of two dozen guys. See, I kept in the theater the first time she throws this in the water. I kept waiting for Aquaman. Like, just because I was like, man, they wouldn't push him so hard. Unless if he didn't have anything to do in this movie, then we have the and that, Superman drop into the scout ship. I love how he goes through the metal and it comes down like rubble. I wanted to throw out real quick before we get too far off. Uh, I kind of wish the casting of uh, Martha Wayne had been Carla Gugino. Just like because a lot of people from Watchmen have been cast in the DC films. She mm -hmm. was the voice of Kay or Kelix. Um, mm -hmm. but just the idea that the comedian and the Silk Spectre were Batman's parents. You'll learn. I love that. <laughs> You'll learn. I hate the sin. His existing. <laughs> the devil will do it. Yeah. See, and this is the one thing that this is the one thing that is is the hole in Lex Luthor's plan. You're literally creating a doomsday. You are literally creating a creature that is going to eliminate life on the entire planet. Like, what is going to happen if he was successful? Like, if Doomsday was successful and and continued to live. Like, what was going to happen? What was your plan after that? Like, you literally you literally spelled out doom for the entire planet. That was where I kind of thought maybe, like, he has a secret weakness inside of it. With uh, That's why his blood was there. Mm. Born to destroy you. So, I mean, a little bit different of the Doomsday. He looks like a troll from, or an orc coming out right here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a little bit different Doomsday, like, origin in this film. I mean, I was okay with it. I'm, um, it's, it's comics, it's comics to, to film. You know what I mean? Some things just don't translate right. And they, They've changed things in the MCU, but people don't seem to have much of a problem with that. Yeah. Uh, not, not to go on to, not to go on much of that, but, um, you know, but I when love they that. change something here, that it's like. Doomsday goes to punch Luther and Superman stops it. Yeah. He literally stops Luther from getting killed. Yeah. And yeah, the, do, the, the massive size of Doomsday is freaking sweet. I love that. The only thing I don't love is I wish, like, as they fight, there's two things I don't like. He, I wish he would have gotten more bones. Um, like bones just kept growing out of him more and more. So we got more of that classic doomsday look. Yeah. So um, that, that, uh, on the bones, like if I thought like the more he hit him and things like that. Yeah. Like, like the, the bones would break and protrude, you know what I mean? And, and it would develop naturally as it, as the battle went on. The, the symmetry here and the poetic justice of the fact that, you know, Doomsday is built from Zod's body. So it's almost like he's fighting Zod again at the exact same spot he fought him last time. Right. 
even though it is Doomsday, you know, like it's built from reanimated, you know. All right, and then so, the president yep. here is uh, Patrick Patrick Wilson, who, who, who is, is now Orm. Yep, who's now Ocean Master Orm. So Patrick Wilson, you know from Watchmen, Jeffrey Dean yes. Morgan, Thomas Wayne from Watchmen. Uh, perfect Billy casting. Crudup. Yep, Billy Crudup from Watchmen as Henry Allen. Perfect casting with Ezra Miller. Absolutely, There's you could Batman. totally believe that it's his father. <laughs> oh. I love it. Like I, I'm sold on it. All right. So we have we have the mysterious woman on a plane, leaving. You know, army clashes with creature. She looks concerned. So we have this destruction of Doomsday here, and this is where we're starting to get into our third act CG overkill slowly here okay so when you when you fight with Superman and Doomsday and Wonder Woman I mean I don't like this you can't get away from it I don't like the (sighs) that energy blast that energy wave yeah now we saw um, Anderson Cooper, another yeah, real the, life person. The, yeah, the um, Alfred. The energy knowing. wave I have um, a little bit of an issue with, but the right um, she says um, Miss Prince. Had they held that back till that moment, could you imagine how ape crap crazy you would have gone? Right. All right. So this is Superman right here. I have said this all along. There's two things that Superman should do when he's fighting someone like this. Take him into space and throw him or put him in the Phantom Zone. Okay? Can't get him to Phantom Zone. How about just let Superman take him into space and throw him? Like, you don't have to kill him, but, you know, Doomsday can't fly yet. Just let him float. You know, just chuck him into space and you're done. Like, you know, his... He could have done that right here. But no. Yeah. They had to shoot nukes at him, which, you know, just made Doomsday more powerful and, uh, took Well, you know that, uh, you have to know that, that some of those generals are still under the impression or still have their own feelings that if we get a chance to launch a nuke at Superman and destroy this being on Earth, you know what I mean? Yes. And get rid of him, then the first chance we get, we need to do this. You know what I mean? They're hoping they can take them both out. Yeah. They're hoping they can eliminate both with one stroke right now. And they're, and they're in, they're in space. They're out of the atmosphere and, and, uh, it's not going to cause any collateral damage. Yep. Like this is the best opportunity that they have. And I but love the Batman. fact that they, oh, yeah. Like just looking up and seeing that, like, yeah, that massive Perry, explosion. Like, Perry White and the people in the background. Like I'm pointing out background people for my discussion I'm building for later. Lois seeing it. And then. So what they did, back. they just. Yeah, what they did by by doing what they did, they actually stopped their progression from Earth. So, Strikers like, Island came back. Another DC place, Strikers Island. Mm-hmm. I love this. It's moving. Like you done messed up. (laughs) Yep. Like right here. I love it. Like he rips his skin. All right. We're getting bones now. Awesome. This is what I needed more of. I need more bones, less of this energy. Like, because this is what pisses me off. Right here, where he just looks like a giant energy, like electric Superman. Right. And now he's just like, yeah, those wad. Right. See, those, those energy blasts, I don't. Yeah, I don't understand really the um, uh, what they were going for with the energy blast. Well, actually, like I said, the only 
I think I told talked to you about it before was the um the only thing that I can come up with is is the in Superman Doom the energy that that Doomsday generates yeah. where animals and plants and people everything just starts to decay and die and burn around him that's the only connection that i have to what that energy wave might be the heat vision i have no problem with especially since you know it come they created him from zod and yeah and i mean um if it was the energy kind of like the whole uh solar flare he would be drained of power yeah the kryptonite weapon yeah that's that energy, that energy, the only connection I have whatsoever is from Superman Doomed. Hey, I'll take it. I will say the Superman looking all creepy in space is creepy, and that's straight out of uh, Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, after he stops the nuclear, the Russian nuclear bomb, and it and it nearly kills him. You know, and then here Batman is like. He thought fighting Superman was bad. This is like to the next level crazy. Yeah. Like you have Superman holding, you have Superman holding back. You don't, you don't have a creature of pure rage just trying to squash you like a bug. Now here's where we get, you know, more establishment of his powers are from the sun as we see him healing, you know, before our eyes as the sun. His eyes light up. Yeah. Doomsday's flying. And that, that scene of him healing and the eyes lighting up in space, I think that, I think they took that from the, um, cinematic trailer for DC Universe. Have you watched that? Yes. From years and years ago? Okay. There's our Doomsday reveal shot in the, in that one trailer. The ultimate mm-hmm. bullshit line. Yep. And then boom. This, <laughs> the reveal of Wonder Woman. Sorry, I'm a little ahead of myself. No, dude. <laughs> she straight can. up, like, Batman was, like, about to die. And then there she is. And, like, could you imagine seeing this movie, having not known that, that was her? You would have heard the Miss Prince line, and then that's when she shows up, like. Yeah, shows up and just. And then boom, and, Superman. And they only. Yeah, and you only see it real fast, like. It's only a quick shiny blur that comes in when the heat vision starts to go after Superman or Batman. It's just a quick shiny blur. And then you, yeah, if you would have got that, you'd have got the music and then her come down and just Wonder Woman. Yeah, that'd have been, <laughs> that'd have been an amazing reveal. I love that. It's like only a kryptonite weapon can kill it. She's like, what is it? And then here's Lois searching for this. I love this. Did you find the spear? He knows what he's looking for. Feeds on energy for some reason. Well, every time they hit it, it makes it stronger. I mean, it is kinetic energy when you, when you damn it, when you hit something. She with you? I thought she was with you. Then you get the Trinity shot. Which I would have liked better if it was Batman holding a battering and not like a gas gun. <laughs> but this is what I don't like. Like straight up like electric dooms. It's just too much for me. Like it's just like they're tearing up this like abandoned. Let's, let's just point out that we know it's an abandoned warehouse. On an abandoned port. Like he's shredding some like Power Rangers destruction right here. You know, the, the destruction that was used in BVS, I mean, in Man of Steel was more of what I would have expected for him fighting Doomsday. Yeah. We have that awesome shot of Wonder Woman and Superman holding back. And then there's the Doomsday troll face. With the bone protrusions out of his face. And, and then... Wonder Woman and Superman attacking. <clears throat> I love how they work together already, though. She takes his legs out from under him and he pile drives him into the ground. 
And might, might I say that her slicing that car in half with a regular sword coming at her is more impressive than uh, Psylocke from X-Men Apocalypse doing it in slow motion with some psychic katana, you know, like... There's nothing. It was so much more impressive. There's nothing <laughs> impressive about that. Except, about X Men Apocalypse, ex- except for Olivia Munn. Just, that, just her being there. That, that movie that wasted so much potential. <laughs> but it I love did. that sh- one on one thrown up against the car, and she just kind of smiles and chases. Then we have Superman heat visioning Doomsday. Yeah, this heat vision battle. I thought he, you know, he could have went solar flare here. I mean, but the power was, I think, too new. Like, by the time this was filming and everything. Right. This would have been in post when that was put into the film or the comics. Yeah. I yeah, t- that was late in the new 52 where they did the solar flare. Yeah, it was almost at rebirth. Yeah. Um, and he I finally t- hears her. Finally, here's Lois trapped under the water. I do want to say, like, point out, I like the, just the little light blue that's the edge of his symbol on his chest. Yeah. This, out of the three Cavill suits, this one's my favorite. Oh, big time. Absolutely. You know, um, especially with the right lighting, this one looks even better. Um, right. And, you know, I'm going to point out coming up here, um, and I've never heard it said, and I just, and it just came to me right now, um, him coming up out of the water with the, with the kryptonite spear, not being able to make his way out of the water and being saved by a woman. That's straight, that's straight Superman 1978. Oh, yeah, you're right. You are absolutely right. I hadn't thought of it before either. I like how he, how Batman throws that smoke grenade to, before he dives off the balcony and Doomsday loses track of him. I mean, I mean, honestly, it's one of those things like Batman's like, all right, I shot my one grenade. That was my one trick to get the spear. Other than that, like, uh, guys, I'm pretty much, uh, I don't really got anything going on for me, guys. Oh, yeah. And this point, at, at this point in the battle, like, he has he has nothing but distraction and waiting for his time to shoot off that grenade. Like if he if he even takes one punch, I mean look what he's doing to Superman and Wonder Woman. If he even takes one punch, he's dead. See, I mean Wonder Woman here, like everyone talked about her muted colors and everything. Yeah, they are muted, but also like this armor is the same armor, and it's like it's worn down. You know, it's been yeah. diminished. Um, cause it is brighter in Wonder Woman and then it's brighter in Justice League. And I kind of, I kind of like to think about it right now in my head canon was she hasn't worn this in a while. You know, we don't have the, 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 uh, the events of Wonder Woman 84, you know, or whatever, which go on record to say I don't really think that's the title of it. I just think it's kind of what they're using right now. Um, yeah. Until it's officially like released title. But right here, when he says, tells her he loves her, she's his world, back to what his dad said. I hate Doomsday all electric right here. You know, Wonder Woman gets him with the lasso. Yeah. Love it how her lasso can hold him, though. Boom. Gas grenade of kryptonite right here from Batman, his last shot. Yeah. Weakening Doomsday. Superman flying in with a little bit of the curl going on with the boom, speared him. Like bam. Right through the heart. It's just it's just the overkill of the energy, like and then the Wonder Woman loses the lasso, the the bone hand is cool. That's yeah stab oh. Superman. Like that's Yeah, and that's huge too. That's not like a s that's not like a shank. I mean that that's like Oh, I don't even know. It's like taking a tree trunk through the through the chest. Yeah, and then he oh, pulls himself humongous. on it to push the spear in deeper. Yeah. So the radiation from the spear is injuring him. 
This way he actually pushes the spear completely through Doomsday's heart, Doomsday's chest. And then there Doomsday just like eradicates, falls holding Batman, or Superman just drops him. Boom. Yeah. There you I go. mean, this was, this was huge going for the death of, the death of Superman. And, um, you know, some people see it as a misstep. I, like I said before, if I, had I got my, had this been a two-parter or had I got a Superman movie before this, it would have been big, but it's still right. pretty big because it would have been nice to had, had Superman, Diana, and Bruce really have some sort of a relationship before this. Right. Um, I mean, sure. If we would have got another movie, I mean, it would have been, it would have been one thing, but I don't think it was, I don't think it was a misstep, um, in, in what we are, in what we have in developing the universe. I don't think it was a misstep. Um, here's more crisis you know, imagery they, right here. Yeah. The, the cross is in the background. The crosses, but like the coming down, like with the cape as a robe type thing wrapped around him. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't find it as a misstep. I thought it was pretty bold and I thought, I thought that the, the sacrifice that he made, um, gives, gives the, the power to the character. Yeah. It, 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 he it doesn't, it, it eliminates the, it eliminates the con, the, the controversy around Superman, around, who is he? What is he? What is he here for? This and that. Like it, he sacrificed himself to stop this creature, to save the world, to save people again. He died doing this. And it you also know what what I mean? changes Bruce, you know, it puts him back on the right path. I mean, in this story, yeah. in this arc, it makes sense. You know, here was the one hundred percent out of Batman and the teaser, like to really see Which is a great shot. <laughs> this is my favorite Batman costume. Mm hmm. Like, I like it. I don't like the thick black bat. Not a huge fan of that, but the, uh, just the, uh, the, the gray on the black, I like. Um, you know, it's my number one favorite. My second favorite's the Dark Knight costume. So here we have what was cut from the theatrical cut. The, Soldiers going into the Kryptonian ship. And the design that they made, because they said this was Steppenwolf. Yes. They, they said this was Steppenwolf. The design of Steppenwolf right here, I wish they would have used for Justice League. Yeah. It he was, looked more like a creature. Um, I wish they just would have used more of the comic book Steppenwolf. As he was, um, it still works because it's Steppenwolf made out of that metal stuff. So it still yeah. translates. Um, but it's interesting that Luther was back in the ship there. Um, you know, well, it, I don't think Luther ever left the ship, but I mean, but in that the, part down, well, I mean, you're right. Never mind. I'm stupid. He's um, in there. Yeah. Down in the amniotic fluid. But the one thing that gets me is in, in that scene, it's like, was was the ship was was the computer telling him more um more history of what was going on what he wanted to learn or was that like a communication or or right. what was going on that's re that's really left pretty vague as, as to what was happening and i love this where perry opens up the paper he sees superman but he goes to the page with clark Kent. He sees this. I love this. The empty city shots like those, those great Snyder filler shots, um, mm -hmm. you know, Oh, I think Solomon's awake. So, Snyder's imagery is, is just classic. Bar beautiful sandwich shop. Solo. They compare it to this is Kennedy dead. I mean, this is, it's a nation in mourning. Hey, Solo. Buddy, I'm in the basement. And then I love the shot where they go from a nation in mourning to 
Clark Kent's funeral or Clark Kent's funeral is, is what's important. We get Pete Ross back here. Somewhere Lana Lang's supposed to be there. That's There's a different the, creature there, isn't it? No, that's, that's the same guy. I'll say, in that yep. scene, he looked different. But I knew, like, when we were actually outside. See, and Perry's there. Jenny's there. Yeah. You know, we don't see the the body, really. Like, yeah. Martha. Clark's got this, like, pine coffin. She's in his room. Lois is. No Lombard. No. Nope. She looks, you know, not hating, but Amy Adams in that shot right there looks old. Like older, you know. Well, she, I mean, she's older, plus um, uh, she is, she is devastated, just like Martha, over, you know, her, her, her love is, is dead. The love of her life is dead. There's the ring he was going to propose. You know, he had plans. Mm -hmm. He was living his life. I still have problems that Lois Lane's a redhead right here. Just saying. Oh, <laughs> it just bugs me. I love, eh. I love this for the funeral. The horse drawing, you know. Mm -hmm. I love the fall setting of this film. And then here we have the... the Fall's my favorite season. Mine too. So we have the nation in mourning right here. An empty coffin. Love this shot. Yeah, walking through the fields, the cornfields, just before harvest, to the to the cemetery. The slow motion cannons. That's a Zack Snyder <laughs> trait. Look at all the people. Jimmy wants pizza for dinner. Say yes or no. Sounds good. I'm in. <laughs> the kids want, the kids love pizza. I'm not a big fan of pizza. Anymore, what? Especially. I like pizza. Don't get me wrong. I like pizza. It's just, I have to eat like three quarters of a pizza to feel full. And then it's just, yeah, it's just too much. I don't know. I, it, it doesn't, it doesn't appeal to me like it used to. I still I, like pizza. And I will eat it once in a while, but when the kids want it once a week, twice a week, uh, I'm, I don't like pizza like that anymore. <laughs> I, bl I blame the Ninja Turtles, man. <laughs> right? Hey, that's why I ate pizza when I was a kid, or at least part of the reason. <laughs> there's, that, there's that Snyder cannon shell. Yeah. He just said it shall rise again, foreshadowing. Yeah. This was cut from the original. Mm. See, that was cut. Yeah. Pete Ross actually has lines in this film. I know. He didn't have any <laughs> in the other film. We got some in this one. Everybody leaves. And I was going to say, did he say yes when, when Lois asked if he was Pete Ross? That might have been it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he did. Oh, hold on. Jenny's calling me. Hi, Jenny. Sorry. I'm, me and James are talking. Okay. I can hear her. Oh, 
and we're watching the conversation between Bruce and Diana talking about his death, um, the world honoring him as a soldier, them honoring him as a man there, about finding the other metahumans. I love how he tells her that he failed him in life, but he won't fail him in death. And his death put him back on the right path. Men are still good. Just throwing out, I love my wife. She just couldn't get the gas can because she just learned that when our car is locked, you can't open the the thing, the you know, part to open the gap to get to the gas cap. Oh, okay. <laughs> she couldn't figure out why she couldn't open it. Oh, okay. She was panicking. Yeah, right. <laughs> You need gas to move that vehicle. So I love since the death scene, just like the inner cut sequences of like, you know, we had the Luther cut, the, the, the two funerals, the Clark, uh, funeral. And then we have, uh, just a feeling. I love that. Like help me find the others. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Um, the conversation, uh, he failed him in life. He won't fail him in death. Um, talking about honoring him as a man and the rest and the world honoring him as a soldier. And then this scene right here, Luther in his holding cell. I love this. Yeah. And I know this is the line you're going to say, like, why would you cut that? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. I lost <laughs> because my I jump. Think same way. In the theater, <laughs> when we saw this, the one time, um, and we had this, when he had this, I was like, oh, my God, I jumped out of my seat with excitement and could not believe they cut this line. I love this Batman, like, scary, like... He's got the brand. Look at us. I love that. That's not where you're going. <laughs> right. Right there. You're going to Arkham Asylum. Yeah. Why would you cut that? Like, like I love that. You're going to Arkham. And, yeah. <laughs> and what's what's worse is what's worse about that is he knows how messed up Arkham is. <laughs> And he's like, they're expecting you. Boom. He punches the wall. Like, that's his, I'm giving up the brand. Mm-hmm. Like, my brand is here in your cell because I'm watching you. You know, and he's like, this is whole Luther's like, he's hungry. He's coming. You know, like, had it been something where, like, I don't know, I kind of would have wished it was, like, we saw Luther after, you know, Doomsday escaped. There had been, like, an explosion, and he was in the ambiotic fluid or whatever. And mm -hmm. he was, like, had, it looked like he had went crazy and, like, he was bald. He would lost his hair. Like, it was splotchy right there in the explosion. And we saw 
uh, I love the shot of him walking away, Bruce. We had saw uh, Steppenwolf, you know, talking to him. And then we're just going out with the Hans Zimmer score here. Yeah. Can I just tell you how how sad and disappointed I was that he didn't do Justice League? Like he set up such an amazing set of work with with Man of Steel and with BVS. Um, they carried it over uh, using Wonder Woman's theme extremely well in the Wonder Woman movie. And then you go to Justice League and like Danny Elfman just orchestrates everything. I hate, I, I wish it would have ended right here. I hate the music turn and like the little bit of stuff coming off the grave because it doesn't get paid off. So that is BBS. Our commentary. It's long. We hope you enjoyed this episode. It might be two parts. Uh, yeah, I'm actually see. surprised we made it through. Yeah. James and I were expecting to not make it through, but we did. Um, yeah, you're able to sit down and do the whole thing. I think my children are waking up, so I got to get going. Uh, James, any quick thoughts before I have to run off and save my children? Um, I love this movie. Um, I will always love this movie. Thanks for, you know, sitting down and talking with me while we watched it. And I'm right there with you. Um, it's not a perfect movie. There are parts like we've talked about I'd like to have changed, but I think there's more good. I think over time, minor holes, you know, and and it was weighed down by Warner Brothers, you know, not not wanting to put in the work. Like I said earlier, you know, they, they just they wanted to go off of brand and name recognition alone, and you know, they didn't. They didn't do what they needed to do to um, build up the world around it, and other things suffered for it. Not just this movie. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, please leave us a review to help us get better. If you're an Amazon shopper, just remember you can go to southgatemediagroup.com. There's a portal log into Amazon, and you'll shop into your account just regular, but it also helps keep all the podcasts on and helps keep Southgate running. Remember, look up in the sky.